Chapter 0, I Want to Be a Star Zhong Yi felt that his life was wonderful. Last month, he held his 32nd solo concert. Just a few days ago, he was invited to dinner by the Secretary General of the United Nations. Yesterday, he was invited to be the male lead for the Hollywood, 3D science fiction blockbuster, Railway Gorillas. As an excellent artist, Zhong Yi had mixed feelings. Did he have any regrets in life? No, his life was perfect. If he was to mention a flaw in his life, uh, it would probably be his bad habit of bragging that he had never managed to get rid of. Whatever mentioned previously was just nonsense. Zhong Yi was, in fact, just a fresh graduate. He was an extremely ordinary person in this world. His dream was to become a celebrity. Be it a host, a singer, or an author, he just wanted to become famous. His aim was pretty high. Not only did he want to be a star, he also wanted to become the world's top superstar. This was his life goal. He had never given up on that thought. Tomorrow, he had an interview at a radio station. He still lacked confidence, unsure if he would succeed at it or not. Maybe it was because he slept late last night, but tonight he had a dream where a few lines of words flashed across his mind. Installing game. Authenticating gamer. Game is installed. You are the game's only player. This is a game that will help the gamer realize his dreams. Have checked the gamer's dreams and goals. Game setting completed. Game line ending completed it help gamer to become the greatest superstar in the world. Game difficulty, maximum. Please wait. Randomly choosing new player incentive package. Received reward randomly changing existing world background. Counting down, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Game begins. Chapter 1, The World After Being Altered. Beijing. The morning of the second day. At home, Zhong Yi, who had just woken up, was still wondering about the dream from last night. As he yawned, he switched on the television, so that he could watch the news. Suddenly, he realized that there was an additional silver ring on his left pinky. It was clearly not something that belonged to him. He tried as hard as he could to take it off, but it was to no avail. Not only that, but when he rubbed the surface of the ring, a touchable virtual screen suddenly appeared. It was written in the same font as the messages in his dream. It said, Game Ring Initialized. New player incentive package, randomly changing existing world background is in preparation for augmentation. Counting down. 3 seconds. 2 seconds. 1 second. Incentive package augmentation initialization. Following that, Zhong Yi saw an alarming scene. The HTC phone that he had thrown on the bed began twisting and strangely changed shape. Even the brand changed and TCC was engraved on it instead. One of the two pirated Xu Jimor's poem collection placed by the windowsill suddenly disappeared, while the other became Chen Qianmo's poem collection. He could not notice all the changes, as many things within his house were undergoing changes. What alarmed Zhong Yi the most were the changes on the television. The Changhong branded television turned into a Feitian brand, which he had never heard of. And the main thing was the content being broadcast on the television. Mango TV's new variety show, Glittering Radiance, breaks 1% viewership. Wu Bang's latest movie, White Maiden, breaks 500 million in the box office. Heavenly Queen Zhong Yuanchi's new song failed once again. She will focus on the film industry from now on. Yesterday, the work of world famous artist Dake, Blue Sky, was auctioned off in America. Many people in the entertainment circle dedicated songs to the most influential Heavenly King of Film of the 20th century. Chen Weisha's 10th Anniversary Memorial Concert. Heavenly King Sun Yu teared up on the spot while singing. Zhong Yi looked at all of this for 10 minutes in a state of shock. He still did not understand what had just happened. How did the television and cell phone change brands? Heavenly Queen Zhong Yu Enchi? When was there a Heavenly Queen named Zhong Yu Enchi? And the 10th Anniversary Memorial Concert? Where did this Chen Weisha come out from? How could he not have heard of him? Zhong Yu Enchi? Could it be that Zhong Zi had changed her stage name? Was Chen Weisha Yisun Chen's new name? That can't be right. Yisun Chen is still alive. 
What sort of movie was White Maiden? Was it a film by Yang Song F. Asterisk 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 King starred in? When the F. Asterisk 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 did he start filming movies? Zhong Yi rushed off the bed, in a panic to open the curtains. He saw everything outside changing. The two old trees by the road had disappeared. Replacing them was a flower bed. A high-rise building far in the distance had turned into a shorter building, with only six floors left. And not only had a few buildings that were originally grey in colour subtly changed position, even the colour of the stairs had changed to a brownish white. Ding! Incentives augmentation has been completed. Note, the real world's background has been changed into a theoretical balance. John Yi's face went pale. He picked up that unknown brand phone and examined it. The date and time were right. Today was the day two months after he had graduated from college. After flipping through a few pages of his contacts, he purposely called a few people. His close friends were still the same, but how could the changes in the surroundings be explained? Also, what was this game ring on his hand? Had the game ring really altered reality? Zhong Yi could not believe it, as he switched on his computer to check the internet. The more he browsed, the more frightened he became. It had changed. Everything had changed. There was no one in the show hosting industry named He Jiong or CNA. The music industry no longer had people like Eason Chen or Jackie Chung. The film industry no longer had people like Feng Saogang, Sun Honglei, etc. In China and in foreign countries, people like Chi Baisha or Pablo Picasso no longer existed in the world of calligraphy or painting. The Divine Song, Perturbed? Mo Yang's novels? Beethoven's piano pieces? The movie, Transformers? The variety show, The Voice of China? The famous painting, Mona Lisa? They were all gone. Seeing all of these things being randomly changed by the unknown game, he wondered if these were the game rewards he had obtained as the sole player. However, how did reality become a game? And what sort of game was this? Contra, or Super Mario? Should he use his head to smash at a wall, causing a small magical mushroom to burst out, which could make him bigger? Of course, there were things that did not change. Some important historical figures, world patterns and social environments had not changed. The Master Kong instant noodles on the table were still the same. LV was still a world-famous brand. A lot of things had not been modified. Was this the so-called randomness? Something supernatural had happened. What the heck had happened? At this moment, thumps were heard. Someone outside was knocking on his door. The knocks were quite loud and were definitely done by hammering the door with a lot of strength. Zhong Yi guessed who it was and pretended not to hear it. After the person knocked a few more times, the clinking of keys could be heard and the door was suddenly opened. Zhong Yi looked at the person who came in. He was thinking that even though the world had changed, the landlady was still the same landlady. A woman in her thirties walked over. She looked very beautiful. Sometimes, the two words, very beautiful, were very hard to use in describing her. For example, she had clearly just washed her hair. Her head was still wrapped in a white towel, but her beauty, which could overthrow states and cities, could not be concealed. Her figure was exceptionally good. Her skin's elasticity was clearly revealed and it appeared very sharp. However, one could only understand this beautiful woman's mean side through being in close contact with her for a few days. She could be as venomous with her words as you wanted. If not, how could she still be unmarried at this age? Just that mouth of hers made many unable to tolerate her. Seeing that Zhong Yi was at home, Ario I mean cleared her throat and laughed without a smile, kid, are you trying to play hide and seek with me? Why did you not respond when I was knocking all day? Are you playing dead? Zhong Yi turned slightly awkward, landlady, you came? Ario I mean conveniently sat down in the living room. With a smashing sound, she slammed a calculator onto the table. Zhong Yi had seen her calculator numerous times in the past. Previously, it was a Casio brand, but now it had changed into a new brand that he had never heard of before. It started with a K. It even looked like the calculator businesses had been altered. Why don't you tell me what I'm here for? I'm here to collect rent. 
her fingers hammered on the calculator in a very well-versed fashion. You haven't handed over this month's rent. Adding up last month's utilities, I have already calculated them for you. The total becomes 2,582. I have already reminded you several times. Not one cent less is allowed. I tell you, little Zhong. I allowed you to pay rent monthly, only because you were from Beijing. Go ask around, which place would not first require you to put up a three-month rental deposit. How much special treatment have I given you? Zhong Yi smiled wryly, please give me another few more days. I really don't have any money on hand right now. Once I find a job, I'll give it to you. Rao I mean elegantly swept her fingers, if you don't have any money, get lost now. Zhong Yi pleaded, you know my situation, the rent I previously gave you was all money from my elders. I only have that much money. If you were to chase me away, I can only return to stay with my parents. I had already told them I would move out and be independent once I graduated. How can I just go back with my face still intact? Auntie, look at our floor. The entire Rose commercial and residential apartments are all yours. Your wealth doesn't lack just this bit of money. About this, I have an interview at the Beijing Broadcasting Television Station this afternoon. If I really become a host, I will make up for the rent once I get my salary. Rao I mean glanced at him and, with contempt, said, You? Become a host? Cut it out. With your looks and height, who would pay attention to you in a crowd of people? You only dream all day of becoming a star. You think it's that easy to become a celebrity? If you can become a host, then this old aunt will dare to appear in the spring festival ceremony tomorrow. Zhong Yi said, anyways, just give me a few more days. I. Rao I mean ignored it, no way. Zhong Yi said, don't you see that I haven't even eaten breakfast at all for the past few days? I really don't have enough money. What do I have to do with you not eating? A. Rao I mean said with an inhumane expression. After fussing for a long time, he managed to get the landlady to leave. After about 10 minutes, Rao I mean, who was in pajamas, came back. She did not knock on the door and immediately used her key to open the door. John Yi thought big sister Rao was here to reclaim her money, so he carefully said, Landlady Auntie, you. Rao I mean threw a breakfast set onto the table and coldly grunted, I couldn't eat it alone. Kid, you lucked out. Let me tell you. Even though jobs are not easy to get these days, you are still a graduate from the media college, how can you not get a job to make ends meet? Stop clinging to a single tree, till you hang yourself on it. Zhong Yi was surprised and quickly said, thank you. I got it. Rao I mean, with her cold, beautiful face, left by slamming the door. Zhong Yi felt his heart go warm. Looking at the breakfast on the table, it was still hot. Clearly, it was not leftovers from this older sister Rao. It was definitely something that she had especially went down to buy after she heard Zhong Yi say that he had not eaten breakfast for a few days. Zhong Yi knew older that sister Rao was someone who was warm on the inside, but cold on the outside. She may have a venomous tongue, but she still cared about him. Actually, he also understood what older sister Rao meant. However, Zhong Yi had always had dreams of making it big since he was young. He wanted to stand on a stage, facing the public. As such, he had never considered doing jobs that involved being behind the scenes. Zhong Yi went out by taking the elevator downstairs. On the street, Zhong Yi looked all around. He realized that the road was familiar, yet strange. The billboard commercials were all of celebrities that he did not know. Some business shops were playing the hottest popular music that Zhong Yi had never heard before. As he walked through this familiar, yet strange, street, he found it hard to adapt. He felt like he did not match with this altered world. Many things had changed. Or, it could be said that this was no longer the world from Zhong Yi's past. It was August. The air was still hot and disturbing. It was not scientific. Really unscientific. Zhong Yi was, after all, a graduate from a prestigious university. Of course, he could not easily accept this reality. What day and age was this? It was no longer an ancient society where superstitions, such as demons and ghosts, existed. Being superstitious only brought harm. This was something even elementary school kids knew. 
everything boiled down to science. One had to firmly believe in the power of science. As such, Zhong Yi's eyes turned solemn. He pulled out a one yuan coin from his pocket respectfully and he threw it up in the air earnestly. If it's heads, then this explains that this world's background has really been changed by the game. If it's tails, then it says that everything is fake. Ding ling ling. The coin landed on the ground. Heads. John Yi's vision went black. It wasn't fake. Everything was real. Chapter 2, I Can Save? Afternoon. It was August. The air was still hot and disturbing. That's not right. This description of the environment had already been written. It was August. The air was still, disturbingly hot. Right, that hasn't been used yet. This world's Beijing radio station had merged with the Beijing television station a few years ago. Although they had merged, their offices were separate. Under the radio broadcasting building, Zhong Yi adjusted his western suit. He looked like a dog, a respectful person, before walking in. All the official employees had already started work early in the day. Now, a large portion of the people who entered were interview candidates, like Zhong Yi. There was still some time, let's examine the ring. Zhong Yi lowered his head as he fiddled with the mysterious game ring on his left hand. The eye catching screen could only be seen by him. The people surrounding him did not notice the screen. Zhong Yi felt a chill run down his back. It was too sinister. Could something have gone wrong with his brain? So as to result in such serious illusions? There was a second when he had thought that he would have to eat the brain supplement, brain white gold, for life. The virtual screen had a few options. Reputation, 199,983. Items, none. Merchant shop, not unlocked. Lottery, obtain a treasure chest prize. Note, the increment of reputation is related to the player's fame, exposure, achievement, trust, reputation, and other related factors. The items in the merchant shop and lottery can be bought using reputation points. Reputation is total reputation gained since the player's birth until today. 190,000 plus reputation points. Johnny wondered for a while. He had obtained a few awards when he was in elementary school for writing composition. He also did all right in his studies during middle and high school. He was frequently praised by his teachers. Right, he even had the experience of going on TV. He and his dormitory mates in college were interviewed by a CCTV reporter on the streets in Shidan. Before the reporter could hand over a microphone to him, Zhong Yi had answered immediately, I'm very happy. Back then, the CCTV reporter was rendered speechless and said, We aren't asking that, we are asking if you feel. And before he finished speaking, Zhong Yi, who seemed to be deep in thought, suddenly said loudly, Socialism is good. Well, it was unknown if it had been broadcast, in the end. Were all these reputation points obtained from that? To earn 190,000 plus reputation over 23 years? It seemed pretty good. However, Zhong Yi quickly did not think so anymore. When he opened the virtual screen's options to see what he could buy with his reputation points, he was rendered speechless for a long time. The merchant shop had not been unlocked, so he could only click on the lottery choice. Lottery, requires 100,000 reputation points. Upon purchasing, the game will randomly choose a treasure chest. Heavens! After all that he had done in his life, he had gathered enough reputation points just to draw once in the lottery. Just short of drawing twice. With the mindset of trying his luck with the lottery, he touched the screen with his hand. It had a solid feeling. After confirming his selection on the prompted display, 100,000 points were spent and his reputation immediately became 99,983. The lottery interface flashed and a virtual wheel appeared. There was a needle and a button. On the wheel were the words, consumption category, stats category, skills category, and special category. Each category had a respective color and its own region. The four regions were different in size. The consumption category took up a large portion of the wheel e nearly half of it. Next up were the stats and skills categories. Together, they took up nearly the other half of the wheel. The smallest region was the special category. 
it only took up a tiny region and was nearly invisible. A game screen introduction appeared. Category explanation, consumption category, one-time use disposable consumable item. Stats category, permanently increasing a stat. Skills category, skills experience item. Special category, adds the purchasing privilege of buying a certain merchant item. Note, the treasure chest from the item category where the pointer stably stops will be the item that will be obtained. John Yi was confused. He could only try by pressing the button to begin the lottery. B-A-D-A. The lottery began. The needle on the wheel kept moving as the wheel rotated clockwise extremely fast. After a few seconds, the needle slowed down and finally landed on the biggest area on the wheel, the consumption category. The lottery was completed. A tiny golden treasure chest appeared. The prize was automatically stored in his inventory. And within his inventory appeared an icon of a small golden treasure chest. How do you use it? Zhong Yi tried stretching his hand into the inventory. His hand actually entered as if there was a space within it. As he touched the floating treasure chest, small, he grabbed it and opened the treasure chest that no one else could see, while still on the street. With a flash of golden light, the treasure chest opened. It was a tiny crystal. Displayed item, save. Item description, one-time use disposable consumable item. Saves a record. This save file can only be stored for half an hour. Save? This was extremely familiar to Zhong Yi. Anyone who had played games knew that saves were used just before closing the game, or to redo a certain event later on. It could only be stored for 30 minutes. Did that mean that it could not be used 30 minutes after it had been used? The save would be invalidated? As for the lottery and the treasure chests, they were not foreign to him. Many games had a lottery. Treasure chests of different grades resulted in different grades of items. The probability was also different. Zhong Yi took the save crystal out. The golden treasure chest immediately disappeared into points of light. Zhong Yi tinkered around with it. Pa! Accidentally, he had crushed the crystal. Saving. Saving completed. At that moment, time seemed to stop for a second. Everything stood still. When everything was restored, the ring's interface had one more option. Load save was displayed. The record was saved just like this. Zhong Yi touched his nose, still confused. Newbie incentive? Background change? Treasure chest lottery? Items? Save? Was he really playing a game? The interview is at 10 a.m. Let's hurry. Brother son, what's the hurry? You will definitely be accepted. That's not necessarily true. They will only be hiring two people for the radio host position. I heard that there were more than 20 people that applied for the written interview. The competition is fierce. Indeed. The position for hosts are the most popular. Old Jew and I have comparatively less pressure. I applied to be an editor, while Old Jew applied to be an operator. There is less competition, since fewer people applied for it. Some people said this as they walked in. John Yi looked at the time. He ignored researching the game ring and hurried upstairs. The interview today was too important for him. He had thought through his development path properly. With his qualities and image, should he be a television host? A singer? A movie star? He did not even qualify to be a villain in a movie. He wasn't outstanding and would never become popular. Thinking it through, it was best that he start off as a radio host. The requirement of having good looks were lower by a tiny bit. The listeners would only have contact with his voice, so it was the best position for him to begin in. It was also the springboard for his future development. He could not fail at this. Second floor. Radio host interview venue. There were over 20 people in the corridor. Everyone was a competing against each other, so the atmosphere was peppered with silence. Zhong Yi glanced around and suddenly felt a chill. All of the 20 plus people were handsome and beautiful, except him. All of the 20 plus people were aged between 25 and 30 and had experience, except him. Zhong Yi's only advantage was that he was trained specially for the job. 
he was a graduate from the Media College's broadcasting department. Besides that, he didn't have a single advantage. After graduation, Zhong Yi had also interviewed at a few broadcasting media companies, but he was eliminated at the interview phase. Zhong Yi knew that it was because he lacked the looks and experience. Sun Hong Wei. Here. Come on in. The first person was brought into the room. The interview was over in five minutes. When the next person was called inside, the people beside him quickly asked about the interview. However, after a few times, no one asked any more. This was because everyone's interview was different. Some were asked to interact on the spot with a difficult audience. Some were asked to debate on a topic. These differences were here to understand the candidate's overall quality. Fifth person, Zhong Yi, a female assistant called out with a list in her hand. Zhong Yi took a deep breath and stood up. He would be lying if he said he wasn't nervous. Within the room were eight interviewers. There were both men and women and they looked serious. Seeing Zhong Yi, at least two of them frowned. It was unknown what they found unsatisfactory. Zhong Yi gently bowed. He handed over the required recordings of his information and speech to the interviewer before returning to his seat. He began introducing himself, Dear Teachers Asterisk, How are you? My name is Zhong Yi. I'm 23 years old this year and I graduated from the Media College's broadcasting major. I. A middle-aged man impolitely interrupted, We have your resume, so you don't have to repeat it. He looked down at the information in his hands, oh, your written test results barely made the cut. The middle-aged woman beside him exchanged looks with him and took out a manuscript. She laid it on the table and said coldly, there are only two questions for the interview. The first is for you to use your fastest speed to finish reading the manuscript and then read it off script. Off script? It was that simple? John Yi was overjoyed. Although going off script was not his best trait, it was not too difficult for him. He had undergone systematic training on this, back in college. It was considered part of the basics. As such, he walked up and picked up the manuscript and looked at it. There were about a thousand words. It was very long. But just as Zhong Yi was feeling confident that he could memorize all these words, the middle-aged woman stretched out her hands and took the manuscript from Zhong Yi's hands after ten seconds. Oh. I haven't finished reading it. John Yi said in surprise. That's it. Read it. The middle-aged woman said indifferently. The other interviewers did not have any reaction. It appeared very normal. However, John Yi was in a daze, teacher, it was just ten seconds and there were a thousand words. The middle-aged man said unhappily, if you need a day's time to memorize it, then I can just grab anyone on the street to do it. Why would we need an interview? Since we asked you to recite it, recite it. Why are you saying so much nonsense? John Yi was a bit angry, but. Say as much off script as you can. The middle-aged woman said impatiently, hurry up. There are still more than ten people after you. John Yi swallowed his anger and began reciting, a notary organization, which ensures judicial activities and the stability of social order in our country, is a special lawful cause. Notarization is a notary organization that depends on natural persons, lawful persons, or, or. After ten seconds, that was all that he had read. A few of the interviewers scribbled something on their books. Following that, the middle-aged man waved his hand, that's it. There's no need to ask the second question. Next. Zhong Yi knew that he had failed at his interview once again. He was disgruntled. Weren't these people being too unreasonable? You didn't even tell me how much time I had and asked me to go off script. In the end, you wanted me to begin just after 10 seconds? Not to mention reciting it, I want to see you try reading a thousand words in 10 seconds. If you can really finish it from beginning to end, then I'll eat the Changi 3. A. Forget it. The country would not let me eat that. At the last moment before he walked out of the interview room, he heard the faint voice of an interviewer behind him, in the future. People with such looks do not need to go through the interview. It's a waste of our time. John Yi heard this. Only then did he realize that the moment he entered, he had been given a death sentence. 
they had purposely given him an interview question that no one could answer, even under the threat of death. Maddening. I'm wasting your time. You didn't even give me a chance to answer. I don't believe it. John Yi, who was in the corridor, felt like his heart had been wrenched out. He recalled the save record. The time that had passed since he had saved was still under 30 minutes and it was still within the save record's effective time range. He decided to use it as a last resort as he opened up the Rings game interface. Looking at the load save option, he gritted his teeth as he pressed down on it. He did not know if it would work. Reading save. Reading completed. Asterisk is using a formal mode of address here, kind of like, sir, or, mister, in English. In Chinese, they use a more ambiguous word of respect that is also used to address teachers and there will be a play on words in the future, so the literal translation is used here. Chapter 3, Dumbfounded Interviews. His eyes went into a blur. The surroundings changed. The sky was blue and the ground was grey. The first feeling that Zhong Yi had was that of the change in temperature around him. It was August. The air was still hot and disturbing. A. Why does Zhong Yi like to use this to describe his environment? It isn't that his vocabulary is lacking, nor is it because he is lacking in literary knowledge, resulting in him knowing only those few descriptive phrases. It really isn't. Seriously, it really isn't. It's because, because, never mind. You will never understand, no matter how much I explain our artist's world. The interview is at 10 a.m. Let's hurry. Brother son, what's the hurry? You will definitely be accepted. That's not necessarily true. They will only be hiring two people for the radio host position. I heard that there were more than 20 people that applied for the written interview. The competition is fierce. As the changes caught him off guard, Zhong Yi did not catch his footing and stumbled to the ground. As he helped himself up, he looked around. This was no longer the corridor from before. He was now standing in front of the radio broadcasting station's entrance again. This was where he had previously saved. Even the dialogue of the candidates that had been heard after saving was exactly the same. Looking at the time on his cell phone, he had really returned to a time that was half an hour ago. God. This. Let's not think too much. There are important matters to do. John Yi thought through it once and came around. Now was not the time to research on what had happened. He absolutely needed to get the job of being a host. Saving had given him a chance to redo it again. Even if he didn't understand what had happened, he still had to take advantage of the opportunity. He didn't go up the building. Instead, he searched the internet on his cell phone. As he remembered the first line of the interview, it was very easy to find it. John Yi quickly found the article. It was a research thesis of some unknown student in a university in the South. He guessed that the interviewers had randomly found it on the internet. He only had about 25 minutes or so left. Without saying another word, he immediately started memorizing and reciting it. The 1,000-word manuscript was very long. Thankfully, it wasn't some ancient text or classic. As the entire thesis wasn't full of abstruse words, and with every word related to the next and being in accordance with common sense and general knowledge, it wasn't that difficult to memorize it. Besides, Zhong Yi had some knowledge of the law, so he knew some of those words. He needed to memorize it. Success or failure rested on this. In the broadcasting building, at the interview venue. A female assistant opened the door and looked at her list, Zhong Yi. After calling once, with no one responding, she repeated, Is Zhong Yi here? It's your turn. At the end of the corridor, Zhong Yi briskly walked over with his mouth seemingly chanting, I'm here. I'm here. The female assistant looked at him with suspicion. Having seen hundreds of interviewees this year, this was the first time that she had seen someone chanting. Were monks and priests prepared to join the workforce? In the room. During the idle time between interviews, the eight people were drinking tea and exchanging their views. A 40 plus year old Lee Honglian said disappointedly, This batch of interviewees is too average. An older Zhao Guoju also said, Yeah. It's much worse than the interviews from half a year ago. What use is having a good written score? They lack in ability. 
A youth behind him said, Leaders, there are still quite a few people still to be interviewed. There should be someone good. Hopefully. But I think it's hopeless. Zhao Guoju smacked his lips, previously, that little Shu Asterisk was all right. If there's no other choice, our channel will want him. Li Honglian leered, I think little Shu isn't bad, too. Now, the door was opened after a knock. The next interviewee, John Yi, entered. The people stopped their idle chatter and glanced at him, sizing him up. Dear teachers, how are you? Knowing that they would interrupt his self-introduction, Zhong Yi simply changed his introduction and felt free. To put it bluntly, he was still disgruntled and angry. This fellow's temper was usually bad. If people gave him an inch of respect, he would return a foot of respect. My real name is Zhong Yi. Zhao Guoju burst into laughter, you still have a stage name? Zhong Yi simply replied, I have two stage names, one is, Zhong Tunglan, asterisk and the other is, Zhong Jinkong, star. This world no longer had these two, great people. The interviewers did not understand that they had been unknowingly ridiculed by Zhong Yi. Li Honglian was ignoring Zhong Yi, as she had her head lowered to read his resume. The result was the same. The same scene and the same expressions. This time, Zhong Yi could sensitively detect two interviewers slightly frowning. This was their dissatisfaction with Zhong Yi's appearance. It was weird. Even in an industry where the audience could not see the face of the broadcaster, the broadcasting host was still expected to have good looks. What did it mean to be good? It meant that one needed to look better than the vast majority of people. It had always been like this for broadcasting hosts. Zhao Guoju and Li Honglian, who were sitting beside Zhao Guoju, sat in the middle and were the main judges. As the two radio hosts that would be hired were to be directly under their supervision respectively, they were very serious with their selection. No one wanted trouble for themselves, so when they saw Zhong Yi with his average looks, they had already crossed him out mentally. Furthermore, Zhong Yi had zero working experience listed on his resume. He still needed some training before he could take over the job, so they did not even consider him for the position. It was not bad being in a specialized major, but there were many that graduated from the broadcasting specialization major. And how many of them had become a host? Only a handful of people who were extremely outstanding had managed to do so. Zhao Guoju and Li Honglian exchanged glances and understood the thoughts of each other. This person was definitely not suitable. They would randomly give him a question and shoo him away, it to prevent wasting time. Li Honglian took out a manuscript in the same posture as before and glanced at Zhong Yi, there are only two questions for the interview. The first is for you to use your fastest speed to finish reading the manuscript and then read it off script. Zhong Yi, who came back from a save record, knew their attitude and wished to make it difficult for him, so he stood up and took it without any expression. As expected, in just 10 seconds, Li Honglian had meanly taken away the manuscript. That's it. Read it. The other interviews also knew in their hearts. 10 seconds? Even if it was an experienced person who had decades in the industry, that person would not be able to memorize more than a hundred words in 10 seconds, let alone a mere graduate. A. It should be said that 10 seconds was only enough for them to read 200 words. And even so, they would only get about 40 to 50% of those 200 words right while reciting. And why would that not even pass? That's because this manuscript had more than 900 words. It was only about a fifth. If one could memorize and recite 300 words in 10 seconds, only then was that a perfect score. But everyone knew it was impossible. They were purposely making it difficult for Zhong Yi and it was to the point where they were just disguising their intentions of telling Zhong Yi that he lacked the qualities and abilities. But what made them feel strange was that Zhong Yi did not have any questioning reaction with the 10 seconds of memorizing time. He remained extremely calm and returned slowly to his seat. Li Honglian fell into a daze as she tried to find anger and surprise on Zhong Yi's face, but she could not find anything. The other interviewers found it bizarre, too. Was this kid really stupid, really stupid, or really stupid? We'd made it difficult for him, yet he did not have a single reaction. It seemed like they had done right. This silly kid would be useless, even if he was recruited. He was so stupid and not sharp-minded. He would not amount to much. Zhao Guoju urged, begin. 
Hurry up. There are many people behind you, who are waiting. Li Honglian and the other interviewers immediately gave Zhong Yi a score on his interview results. They did not bother listening before scoring. One wrote 20 points, while another wrote 15 points. They were all very low scores. Following that, they flipped to the next interviewee's resume. Zhong Yi was not in a hurry, even with their urging. He looked at them calmly and recited in a rhythmic fashion, a notary organization, which ensures judicial activities and the stability of social order in our country, is a special lawful cause. Notarization is done by a notary organization that depends on natural persons, lawful persons or the other applications of other groups. Under the legal procedures set up by the courts, matters that deal with the law or documents that are needed to certify the activity require the procedures of a notary activity to be done in accordance with the law. When Zhong Yi went off script for a hundred words, Zhao Guizhu raised his head. When he went off script for two hundred words, Li Honglian gasped and looked at him with surprise. When he went off script for three hundred words, all the interviewers placed the things in their hands down and looked at Zhong Yi in surprise. Zhong Yi was not affected by anyone and kept going on. Because if the relevant parties provide false materials or fail to go through notarized procedures to obtain legal certifications, then there is a negative effect on the reputation of the publicly recognized bodies. Hence, faith is the most basic requirement in the notary industry. In Zhao Guizhu and Li Honglian's eyes, anyone who could memorize 300 words was a miracle and was something impossible, but Zhang Yi was still reciting. This. 300 words. 500 words. 800 words. The interviewer's faces turned aghast. When the last paragraph was recited, Zhong Yi remained at his constant pace, as an embodiment of integrity, a system that builds on the society's trust, a notary allows people to accept and adopt means to acquire trust. With a pause, he cleared his throat, thank you, teachers. I finished reciting. A female interviewer's pen dropped from her hand. Lu Lu, it rolled down to the floor. Zhao Guizhu was in shock and turned his head sideways, old Li asterisk. This. Was it memorized correctly? Li Honglian looked at the manuscript in her hand and gasped, 920 words, recited verbatim. The leftmost interviewer nearly fell from his chair as he said in surprise, how did you do it? 10 seconds? You memorized it all? Zhong Yi smiled. I read things a bit faster than others and have a relatively good memory. A glance would be sufficient. Ten seconds was just enough to sweep through over 900 words. This wasn't just fast, this was f asterisk asterisk asterisking too fast. The person even wanted to ask if Zhong Yi had previously memorized the thesis, but he knew it was impossible. This thesis was unknown and was randomly found on the internet. Besides, there was no way it could have been disclosed beforehand. Li Honglian also randomly grabbed a topic, so how could that person know in advance? F asterisk asterisk asterisk. Are you even human? Zhong Yi's act had shocked them all. A few interviews were greatly surprised, as if they had seen a ghost. Chapter 4, A, uh, The Song of the Stormy Petrel, To Shock the Masses. In the room. Complete silence. In fact, they had not even prepared the second question. They planned to brush Zhong Yi off with the first, but now under these circumstances, the eight interviewers looked at each other without knowing how to give a score. According to the on-the-spot performance, giving this young man a hundred points was necessary. No, it wasn't too much to give him two hundred points. He had read it in ten seconds. Recited more than nine hundred words off script. What sort of godly person could do this? Previously, the interviewers thought Zhong Yi was an idiot for not having any expression. However, apparently it was because he was extremely confident. He had never found the thousand words a problem. Correspondingly, it was them, the interviewers, who were idiots. However, if they were to give Zhong Yi a perfect score, then it was equivalent to hiring him. This young man's written test results may have passed, but it was not outstanding amongst the more than 20 people. The differences between the candidates weren't huge, so the interview was the best way to differentiate them. 80 points was a very high score so giving a perfect score meant that he would definitely be ranked in the top two amongst the more than 20 people. Unfortunately, Zhong Yi's qualifications were not acceptable to them. 
his looks were too average and even a radio host who usually does not need to show his face would still need to show his face occasionally. For example, there would be activities or public appearances. If his looks did not make the cut, it would affect the listeners after they saw him. Hence, good looks and a tall height were essential. Li Honglian was in a dilemma, old Zhao. Zhao Guoju sighed and said earnestly to Zhong Yi, little Zhong, we can tell from this interview that you are a rare talent. Furthermore, you are a specialized course graduate. We should greatly welcome you, that is indeed the case. However, you chose the wrong profession. I do not need to talk about your looks. I guess your college's teachers have given you advice on that matter. The radio profession is like that. How about this? I'll give you a backdoor and we don't need to have the second interview question. There are many positions in our radio station. As long as it's a behind-the-scenes position and not a host position, you can choose any of them. I will pass you immediately. Bring your things tomorrow and report for work. If you want to go down the road of being a host, then it is really not easy. Think through my words. Without a second thought, Zhong Yi said, Teacher, thank you for your kindness. I know my qualifications make my path arduous. However, I only want to apply to be a broadcasting host. This was his insistence on his dreams. If he were willing to switch to another job, Zhong Yi would have done so long ago. He would not have remained jobless to this day. Zhao Guoju waved his hand. This kid sure didn't listen to advice. Li Honglian also smacked her lips, are you sure? Let me give you a warning. The second interview question is not easier than the first. It's almost impossible for you to pass. Young lad, it's not that we are purposely making it difficult for you. Interviews are like that. We give a question of appropriate difficulty according to the candidate's qualifications. Your qualifications really can't pass the threshold needed for a broadcasting host. That's why our questions are correspondingly harder. As such, you need to have far more outstanding talent in order to mask the qualifications you lack. I advise you to think over Director Zhao's words. Wasn't this making it difficult? You are intentionally making it difficult. Zhong Yi was a very stubborn man, and insisted, there is no need to think about it further. Please give your second question. Li Honglian was exasperated at his failure to make good. She shook her head and was also angry. All right, I am in charge of the foreign language channel. There are many English-speaking talents in the station, but we are lacking a person with talent in Russian. This recruiter was originally hoping to get someone who had a basic foundation in Russian. If you can compose a modern poem in Russian that makes us satisfied, then I'll give you full marks for the interview. Russian? He still needed to compose a poem in Russian? Zhao Guoju looked sideways at Li Honglian and did not make a sound. It was a tacit consent. The other interviewers had different expressions on their faces. Zhong Yi had showcased something that had left them speechless. They knew Zhong Yi was someone with ability, but not having good looks in the broadcasting host profession was a lethal death blow. Except for a very few people with extremely outstanding talent, very few people could break through this situation. Hence, it could be seen from the second question that Li Honglian was not giving Zhong Yi an inkling of a chance. Russian? Zhong Yi's resume was right in front of them. The foreign language listed there was only English. That was the only foreign language taught in the university. He wasn't in a foreign language major and, even if he was in a specialized class, a teacher would not be so free as to teach Russian. Without knowing this language, there was no reason to even mention composing poems. If you couldn't even speak it, how could you compose it? Zhong Yi had already expected that the second question would not be easy, but he had never expected it to be of such difficulty. Not a single chance was given to him. And it was in Russian? Zhong Yi wasn't even good at English. He had barely passed the basic eligibility test for graduation, so how could he know some bull asterisk 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 Russian? Damn it! I have a harder path ahead, just because I'm not good looking? And I need to suffer such unfair treatment and torture? What are you basing it on? What are you basing your decision on, that makes you think I can't make the cut? Why will no one give me a chance? I want fairness. Is that so hard? Li Honglian's nails were tinkling on her teacup. 
the poem needs to be an original work of yours. Do not read the famous works of the famous Chen Tianmo or Wells. I'm looking at your language skills and also your literary knowledge. These are all related. Begin. And it had to be an original poem? An interview even thought in his mind, what's the point of carrying on? Just get the next person. Even a person who professionally does Russian would not be able to use Russian to compose a poem, much less a person who doesn't know Russian. Chen Tianmo? Wells? Who are they? Why does it sound familiar? Zhang Yi suddenly recalled. Chen Tianmo was someone he caught a glimpse of when he searched the internet. He was now one of the most famous poets in the country. In the altered world, Zhang Yi Shu Jimo poem collection by the windowsill had changed into Chen Tianmo's. He had nearly forgotten that this world no longer had Shu Jimo or Pushkin. Replacing them were this world's poets and works he had never seen before. Zhang Yi finally refocused and had a brilliant flash in his mind. If he had never seen the poems in this world, then this world would definitely not have seen the famous poems of his world. Zhao Guoju was slightly sympathetic and added on, Little Zhang, it's not too late to regret now. My offer still stands. You don't have to take the second questions test. I will arrange for a behind-the-scenes position for you. Don't take the test. Why should I not take the test? Zhang Yi was already fed up. They had made it difficult for him so many times. Were they even done? You want an original poem in Russian? Sure. I'll create a poem today just for you. I don't know Russian. So what? Zhang Yi had never learned Russian, but that did not mean he didn't know Russian poems. Were these two sentences in conflict? It was completely not in conflict. Back in his college days, the broadcasting major teachers would create all sorts of difficult problems to train them. For example, Zhang Yi clearly remembered one from the second semester of his third year. Their vocal teacher had brought a Russian pronunciation recording of a famous Russian prose and forced Zhang Yi and company to memorize it. Zhang Yi and his classmates found it torturous and took a month before they memorized it. Those days were like a nightmare. But only after memorizing it did Zhang Yi understand his teacher's intentions. His speaking ability and memory had greatly increased. This way of memorizing something and not through understanding the meaning behind the words was very taxing. It was likely that all those who came from the specialized class had such a training experience. If you can't do it, let's get the next person. Li Honglian began to chase him away as she flipped to the next resume. Zhang Yi recalled his year three's basic skills and said, Is prose okay? Prose? Li Honglian was dumbfounded. You still want to do prose? This was even harder than normal modern poems. Furthermore, it was a foreign language's prose. To Li Honglian, this was on a completely different level of difficulty. She was the only person present who knew Russian. But when she encountered prose, Li Honglian would find it extremely difficult to read it, let alone compose a poem. This little Zhang Shaw was good at raising the stakes. If you want to choose to do the harder prose, I will not stop you. As long as it's an original Russian poem, any theme would do. All right. After he said that, Zhang Yi closed his eyes and stayed silent. He was adjusting his mood. Are you done? Why aren't you beginning? Forget it. You haven't even learned Russian. Come again next time for an interview. Can you stop wasting our time? There are still others waiting behind you. Go back. Your qualifications are really lacking for a broadcasting host. After not getting a response for a long time, the interviewers became more impatient. They began nagging. None of them believed he could speak Russian. Wasn't this a joke? As they spoke with doubt and sarcasm, Zhang Yi sounded out from his diaphragm as his eyes opened. The first sentence he said left all the interviewers present gaping. Ah. He really could speak it. What language was that? Zhao Guizhou's eyes glazed over as he looked back at Li Honglian, old Li? This is? The other interviewers stared back at Director Li. They, too, knew that Director Li knew Russian. But as they looked over, they saw Li Honglian's eyes staring, and her eyes were even larger than theirs. Without a word, everyone knew instantly. What the f asterisk asterisk asterisk? 
You can even speak Russian. Zhong Yi began speaking faster and faster. In his voice, it was mixed with pride and apathetic emotion. This was because this poem needed to be recited with such emotions. Gorky's The Song of the Stormy Petrel. This was a Russian poem that everyone in his world knew. It was even in middle school textbooks. This poem was also precisely expressing the emotions Zhong Yi was feeling at the moment. He recited it with glee. The last sentence was especially nearly shouted out by him. The poem was done. Everyone turned silly. Chapter 5, Being Hired. Silence. Not a single person spoke. Zhong Yi was not at all surprised to see them speechless. Li Honglian was already at a loss of words, you. That poem. Zhao Guoju could not understand Russian, old Li, translate it. How's the poem? Li Honglian cleared her throat with a cough, that, I, I, too, did not understand it too well. Asterisk cough asterisk I only understood a small portion. Ah. Even you, as a person who studied Russian, did not understand it. A few of the interviewers nearly fell off their chairs. Prose poems are like that. Russian is also a bit harder to understand. Besides, Little Zhong said it pretty fast. Li Honglian came up with an excuse. Zhong Yi immediately said, then I'll translate it into Chinese and recite it once again. N after seeing director Li being taken aback, a young interviewer was still unwilling to give up. He wanted to gain back some reputation for his leader. As Chinese phrases were rich and contained all sorts of variations, it was different from Russian. Chinese was the only way to test a person's ability. I can't understand Russian? Then I can definitely make a fuss about the Chinese translation. I won't let it rest if you misuse a single word. I will fail you. This person still remembered the secret intentions behind his leader's words. So what if you know Russian? The poem needs to be good, too. You think that you can foolishly pass the test by saying some random Russian phrases? How can it be that easy? Everyone had different thoughts as they focused fully on the Chinese version of Zhong Yi's recitation. Zhong Yi could read some of their minds just by looking at their eyes. He knew that they still thought lowly of him. With a sneer, his emotions were perfectly aligned with his recitation. Up above the sea's grey flatland, wind is gathering the clouds. In between the sea and clouds proudly soars the petrel, reminiscent of black lightning. Glancing a wave with his wingtip, like an arrow dashing cloud ward, he cries out and the clouds hear his joy in the bird's cry of courage. In this cry, a thirst for the tempest. Wrathful power, flame of passion, certainty of being victorious the clouds hear in that bird's cry. Seagulls groan before the tempest, groan, and race above the sea, and on its bottom they are ready to hide their fear of the storm. It was still calm in the beginning. However, as the poem reached its climax, Zhong Yi's tone became more pressing. His volume increased, the wind howls, the thunder rolls. Like a blue flame, flocks of clouds blaze up above the sea's abyss. The sea catches bolts of lightning, drowning them beneath its waters. Just like serpents made of fire, they weave in the water, fading, the reflections of this lightning, a tempest. Soon will strike the tempest. That is the courageous petrel proudly soaring in the lightning over the sea's roar of fury, cries of victory the prophet. Why do difficulties always befall me? Why is the world always this unfair? But. So what if that was the case? So what if my body was shattered? This is the road I chose. I will not retreat. I have no fear. Zhong Yi took a final breath and said loudly, let the tempest come strike harder. The final stanza of the poem was engraved in the hearts of many in Zhong Yi's previous world. It boiled one's blood and, now throwing it into this world, it similarly injected itself into one's blood. Zhao Guoju turned dumbfounded hearing this. Li Honglian also felt goosebumps. The young interviewer who was thinking of finding fault with Zhong Yi's poem was now speechless. He did not even dare to breathe. Silence. Seeing everyone stunned by his poem, Zhong Yi felt discharged of his anger. His emotions escaped from the poem, allowing him to recover his calm. This society judged people by their looks and, over time, he had grown accustomed to it. As such, he did not have any scruples, as long as he was selected, teachers, I have finished answering the second interview question. Ah. 
Okay. Li Honglian's soul finally returned to her body. Previously, her thoughts had flown into the tempest together with that petrol. Zhao Guoju said with a hoarse voice, What's the name of this poem? Zhong Yi answered, This poem's name is The Song of the Stormy Petrol. In Russian, it also has the meaning of a person predicting the storm. What a good petrol! Zhao Guoju may not understand Russian, but he could understand the Chinese perfectly. A flying petrol, a proud petrol, a fearless petrol. That is describing you. Right? The power of poems is sometimes very miraculous. Young lad, you have given all of us a lesson today. I don't dare to take that compliment. Zhong Yi said. Everyone looked at Zhong Yi in a different light. Previously, reciting a thousand words off script had shocked them greatly. Now, a casual recitation of a Russian prose poem that was at the level of a grandmaster had completely conquered the hearts of all the people present. His performance had also slapped all the interviews in the face. Li Honglian had given this question to prevent Zhong Yi from passing the interview. It was clear that she was leading him into a trap, but she had never expected him to give a perfect answer. And the answer even included Zhong Yi's anger and his unwillingness to accept the situation. It made them, as interviewers, ashamed. From which stone did this sort of amazing person jump out from? Li Honglian said with an expression that was hard to read, that will be all for today. Go back and wait for the news. Was he accepted or not? Zhong Yi was not sure either. He only said, all right. Thank you, teachers. He walked away and closed the door. Zhao Guoju, who was all picky with Zhong Yi previously, immediately slammed the table. My literature channel's broadcasting department wants this person. Li Honglian disapproved, old Zhao, didn't you say that you were eyeing that little shoe? Zhao Guoju turned indignant, little shoe can be given to anyone, but this person definitely cannot. Are you even being reasonable? Li Honglian began vying for Zhong Yi, I'm having first dibs on Zhong Yi. I was the one who had first dibs. Your foreign channel is not well matched with him. With his literary prowess, he should definitely come to our literature channel. Say no more, old Lee. It's settled. Whatever good seedlings we have later will all be given to you. I will not vie with you. Zhao Guoju said without relenting. I only want him. And not anyone else. Li Honglian said with a cold face. Zhao Guoju said, last year, I had given up a good seedling to your foreign channel. This year, I'm definitely not giving up. Stop fighting me over this. Later, I'll give you a treat and, at most, I'll owe you one. Afternoon. Jiaman East. After returning from his interview, Zhong Yi did not go to his parents' place. He still returned to his rental apartment. The small apartment was about 30 to 40 square meters, but he still liked it here. After all, this was his first time leading an independent life after graduation. He could not rely on his parents for every tiny thing. He planned to return home, but only after he had accomplished something. Lunch was sumptuous. It was fresh prawns and noodles. Of course, it was the Master Kong branded instant noodles. Without money, Zhong Yi could only make ends meet by eating instant noodles. He did not find it tough while working hard towards his ideal goals and, instead, he found joy in it. Suddenly, without any premonition, a person opened the door with the use of a key. Raoi Min, who was dressed in an autumn dress, entered the apartment, how was the interview? Zhong Yi, who was topless, was at a loss about whether to laugh or to cry as he put on a vest. Landlady auntie, can you please knock first? I have my privacy, too. Raoi Mean sat down with her legs crossed and snapped, what sort of privacy does a little kid like you have? You did not pass the broadcasting host interview, right? I've already told you umpteenth times. Just make an honest living by working behind the scenes. With your looks, who would hire you to be in the spotlight? That is, unless they were blind. It was quite a coincidence when the phone rang. Zhong Yi picked it up and it was the voice of a youth. Hello, are you Zhong Yi? I am. Who is this? Zhong Yi had a hunch, but he still could not believe it. The youth said, I'm calling from the Beijing radio station. You have been accepted. 
and the higher-ups want to inform you to come to the literature channel the day after tomorrow to complete the necessary paperwork. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Putting down his cell phone, John Yi slapped his thigh. Great. He got it. The telephone call's volume wasn't soft, so Rao I mean also heard it. She said, surprised, Aya. Hey. It can't be. You actually managed to get hired. Every dog has his day. Even a rotten egg can be lucky one day. Her tongue was indeed very venomous as she said, even you can be a host. He he. People have said that there are endless possibilities in the future for humans, but I never believed in miracles. However, after seeing you today, I finally believe what the miracle of life means. Miracle of life, your sister asterisk. Can you not be so disparaging? Zhong Yi was in a good mood, so he did not retort. He immediately picked up the phone and phoned his parents. He informed them of the good news that he was no longer a jobless person. He was to become a broadcasting host. Becoming famous and being a celebrity was what he had always dreamed of. Today, he had finally taken his life's first step. Although it was a tiny position and he did not have the looks or the height, but now, because of the game ring's help, his dreams might actually be fulfilled. He remembered the notice displayed in his dream while the game was being installed. This game was to aid him in fulfilling his dreams, in becoming the greatest superstar in the world. Now, the results were striking. The ability to save that he had obtained from the lottery had helped him reverse the situation. The newbie incentive reward that had changed the literary background of the world had also played a miraculous role. Today, he could use his imbalanced knowledge of literature to build his fame. By accruing reputation, he could draw at the lottery, obtaining treasure items to help him fulfill his dreams of being a celebrity. I'm thriving. This bro is going to thrive. Immediately, Zhong Yi felt that even the earth could not stop him. Becoming famous? House? Girlfriend? That was really a problem. Bungalow? Have you even seen the world? Can you live in that kind of broken down place? Does it suit the status of a world famous person? If one wanted to stay, one had to stay in a large mansion. Several tens of thousands of square feet in size. As for a girlfriend? It has to be at least a super beauty like Rao I mean. A girlfriend? Finding a girlfriend with my qualities? Are you cursing me? How can I not go out with three to five beauties at once? Wouldn't it be a loss of face? I need to find at least five. That is just the beginning number. Rolls Royce car? Can you not be so humorous? Can you really not be so humorous? If I don't sit in a bulletproof car when I go out? What happens if I get assassinated? Ah? What to do? Anyways, he would move up to the peak of the entertainment world, step by step. People would remember him. The world would also remember his bright and mighty name, Zhong Jinkong. A, hey, that's not right. You got it wrong. It's Zhong Yi. Chapter 6, Laundry Day. Sunday. Morning, 7 plus a.m., Zhong Yi could not sleep from the excitement. He kept tossing and turning in bed, imagining a better future. However, he heard a knock at the door. Only he and the landlady had his rental apartment's keys. Even his parents did not have it. Without question, it was definitely the landlady inviting herself in. The small room did not have a hall. The bed could be seen the moment that the door was opened. He heard Rao I mean's mature voice floating over, Kid, are you sleeping? Zhong Yi touched his nose and rolled over, I'm awake. Are you looking for me? Rao I mean sat by the bedside and smiled. You have been accepted by the radio station and are reporting to work tomorrow. Shouldn't you be returning the rent you owe to this big sister? Saying that, she seemed to conjure a magic trick by pulling out a calculator and smacked on it a few times. This month's internet fee is also due. You need to add another 80. Zhong Yi yawned, what are you saying? Rao I mean repeated, you didn't catch that. I'm telling you that your rent is now a total of 2,662. Zhong Yi, no, what was the first line you said? Rao I mean blinked her eyes, first line? Kid, 
Are you sleeping? Zhong Yi immediately covered his head with a blanket, I'm sleeping. Heh, you damn rascal. Rao I mean finally got around and smacked on Zhong Yi's thigh according to the contours of the blanket, do you want a beating? Get up. Stop playing dead in front of me. Wake up quickly. If you can't pay the rent, then do some housework, like cleaning the place. Return it bit by bit. Zhong Yi shamelessly said, I'm still sleeping. I'll give you half an hour. I'll be waiting at home at eight. Rao I mean said with her face darkened. Encountering a landlady who valued money as if it was her life made Zhong Yi suffer in silence. However, he really did not have any money this month. As such, he could only struggle to crawl out of bed to brush his teeth and wash up. Right, let's see what the game ring is like now. This was the greatest thing he could rely on in his future bid to become a superstar. When he tapped it open, he realized that his reputation had increased. Yesterday he had spent 100,000 points for the lottery, leaving behind 99,983 reputation points. However, it had now increased to 99,999. He did not need to think to know that this was related to his interview. He had been so outstanding and he had even used Gorky's most famous, The Song of the Stormy Petrel. It was no surprise to have his reputation points increased. Now he was just one reputation point short of having another attempt at the draw. Reputation is commonly a very general concept. From a game's perspective, it was a very vague word. Right, now that he had figured out how reputation points were obtained, he needed to do some household chores for the landlady. He wanted to see if he could add a reputation point by doing this. Suddenly, a loud voice erupted from the corridor, Little Zhong. Zhong Yi realized that it was eight as he quickly wore his slippers and went to the landlady's house. Commercial and residential apartment buildings had long corridors. This corridor was almost all RAOI means property. It was quite obvious what having 20 plus apartments in Beijing, with extremely expensive property prices, meant. RAOI mean could be considered a rich woman. But it was strange that despite staying here for so long, along with the other renters, he had never heard of Sister Rao having any relatives or friends. She was not married and was also childless. They had also never seen Sister Rao work at a job, so everyone found this beautiful landlady mysterious. No one knew how she was so rich. Rao I mean's house was on the same level. It was the biggest loft apartment on this floor. It was the kind where the upper and lower floors added up to more than a hundred square meters in area. The door opened and Zhong Yi walked straight in. Landlady, I'm here. Rao I mean sarcastically quipped, was your Chinese zodiac sign a pig in your previous life? Why are you so slow getting out of bed? Zhong Yi explained, I was too happy last night and didn't sleep all night. I'm still tired now. You just got hired to be a radio host, do you need to make it such a big deal? Rao I mean hit him at where it hurt the most, now, the radio profession is no longer like what it was 20 years ago. There is the television and there is the internet. How many people still listen to radio? Zhong Yi also knew that the radio profession was a thing of the past as he said sadly, hi, if only my mom gave birth to me 50 years earlier, then I might be able to grab an opportune time. Rao I mean sarcastically said, your mom is just 50 years old, how is she to give birth to you 50 years early? Do you think your mom is a snake spirit? Zhong Yi. See how venomous her mouth is. Rao I mean ordered, cut the crap and get to work. Zhong Yi rolled up his sleeves, all right, tell me where to clean. I'll do all your house chores today. Wipe the glass, sweep the floor, wash the sheets and I'll pass my clothes to you. Rao I mean poured a cup of tea for herself and sat comfortably on the sofa. Her legs were crossed, making her look like a lord of the land. She was wearing a shirt and long skirt that was not considered stylish. Her feet wore black flats. Although her dressing sense was old, beautiful people looked beautiful no matter what they wore. Hi, time to get working. Zhong Yi began busying himself sweeping and mopping the floor. Rao I mean was a person whose mouth could not rest. Whenever she was free, she would trample on Zhong Yi by nagging, what kind of wiping are you doing? I'm telling you not to do it haphazardly. I'm not doing it haphazardly. Fine, fine. Go wash the clothes. 
Entering the bathroom, Zhong Yi sighed as he sat down on a stool. He had thrown everything that could be washed into the washing machine. However, there were some clothes that could bleed their color or were not suitable to be washed with the washing machine, so he had to hand wash them by soaking them and scrubbing. Piece after piece of clothes, Zhong Yi did not idle one bit for the entire morning. He had no way out. He had lost his human rights by being in debt. Afternoon. Zhong Yi finished his task as he felt extreme pain in his lower back. Are you done washing? Ario I mean glanced at the clothes hanging out in the balcony to dry. It was rare for her to not wag her venomous tongue as she said with satisfaction, all right, not bad. That will do. You can stay behind for lunch. Putting down the ancient book, Classic of Mountains and Seas, she went into the kitchen to cook. The existence of the Classic of Mountains and Seas had been modified by the game. There were things that changed and things that did not change in this world. Zhong Yi could only slowly learn and get used to the details. Zhong Yi was very happy. He had been eating instant noodles for too many days and now he could finally eat a proper hot meal. He sat on a chair to rest. After taking a few breaths, he opened the game rings interface. He realized that his reputation score had increased by one. It was now 100,000 points. This additional point was given to him by the landlady? It looks like his assumptions were correct. The game ring's explanation of reputation was, the increment of reputation is related to the player's fame, exposure, achievement, trust, reputation, and other related factors. That is to say, if a person were to trust him, admire him or agree with what he did, then his reputation would increase by one. The reputation obtained from others could be stacked repeatedly. How did he figure this out? He figured it out from the interview from the previous day. There was a total of eight interviews, yet John Yi's reputation had gone from 99,983 to 99,999. He had 16 reputation points added. This meant that when Zhong Yi recited the thousand words off script, the eight interviewers had given him a total of eight reputation points. Later, when Zhong Yi recited the, the Song of the Stormy Petrel, they had given him an additional eight reputation points. The numbers matched up perfectly. After figuring out how reputation was computed, what was left was drawing at the lottery. He wanted to see what he could get this time. Zhong Yi looked forward to an item that could allow him to turn into Superman. He would be so happy if he could be worshipped by the entire world. However, that was unrealistic upon further thought. Some people could become Spider-Man from the toxins injected into their body from a spider's bite, while there were others who had pieces of iron placed within their body to become Iron Man. Some people became Batman by spending many years with bats. Well, if that had any scientific basis, Zhong Yi felt that, the chance of him becoming an instant noodles hero was more likely. He drew at the lottery, spending 100,000 reputation. His remainder was zero. The lottery interface appeared as Zhong Yi deliberately blew at his palms. With a rub of his hands, he pressed on the button that began spinning the wheel. It began. The needle was moving very quickly on the spinning wheel. Special category. Give me a special category. Zhong Yi muttered to himself. However, from the wheel's setup, even a fool would know that the special category was extremely rare. Although he did not know what it meant by the introduction text, adds the purchasing privilege of buying a certain merchant item, it was definitely not wrong to hope for a rare item, as that increased its value. However, that 1-2% chance of good luck did not befall Zhong Yi. The needle stopped and it was still pointing towards the largest consumption category. Treasure chest, small, dropped. As he opened the chest, light blinded him. Inside was something that looked like a stick of chewing gum. Unlucky sticker, effective once it's stuck on. Bad luck will surround the person. Lasts for five minutes. Chapter 7, First Day of Work Monday. The weather god was not happy, so the haze was heavy. This was John Yi's first day of work. He wore a western suit and a tie. He came, once again, to the Beijing radio station respectfully and found the literature channel department upstairs. The radio station's coverage was the Beijing Tianjin Hebei area. Some small cities in the northeastern regions could also receive the signal. Although it could not be compared to the central radio station, 
its coverage and listeners were much greater than other local radio stations that were similarly ranked. The leader's office. Zhong Yi knocked on the door gently. After hearing a come in from inside the room, he pushed open the door and entered. Sitting behind the office desk was a person Zhong Yi had met during the interview. He was Zhao Guoju, who was in his 40s. He was the person in charge of the literature channel. Be it the radio station or the television station, this position in Beijing and several areas was called director. Of course, there were exceptions, for example, Southern and Northern Hewn would call this position master. Leader. Hello, little Zhong. Sit down. Have you brought all the documents? I brought them all. Great. Someone from HR will do the hiring procedures for you, but there's no rush with that. Drink some water and... After that, I'll first bring you to the office in order to introduce you to everyone. Okay, thank you for the trouble. Zhong Yi was very mindful of his speech, even during this simple exchange. After a while, Zhao Guoju led Zhong Yi with a smile to the Literature Channel Department's office on the same floor. It was a large area and there were about 30 to 40 desks. As today's programs might have already been pre-recorded, everyone did not look too busy. Some were playing games, while others chatting. Only when they saw their leader come did they stop playing and chatting. Leader. Good morning, leader. Everyone greeted. Zhao Guoju nodded and slapped Zhong Yi on the shoulder. Everyone, stop what you are doing. I'm introducing a new comrade. Zhong Yi is a broadcasting major graduate from the Broadcasting College. He will be one of us, from today onwards. Please welcome him. Although the Media College was its current name, it was previously known as the Beijing Broadcasting College. Its name was changed only in the past few years, so many people still called it by its previous incarnation out of habit. There might be some schoolmates of Little Zhong here. You are his senior brothers and senior sisters. Everyone, please take care of this rookie. The welcoming applause was sparse. Some people gave an obvious questioning look. Zhong Yi grabbed the opportunity to say hello and gave a brief self-introduction. Following that, Zhao Guoju called over a youth. He looked to be about the same age as Zhong Yi and could not be much older than Zhong Yi. However, there was no need to compare their looks. He was much more handsome. Tian Bin. Ah, you are radio host. Bring little Zhong around these days to get him familiar with the business. Tian Bin offered to shake Zhong Yi's hand, hello, little Zhong. You can ask me anything if you have any doubts. Zhong Yi immediately used two hands to receive the handshake, Brother Tian, I'll be troubling you in the future. Zhao Guoju said to Zhong Yi, Little Tian is the radio host of our channel's late night ghost stories. Learning from him would be helpful to you. Previously, the literature channel had ghost stories on the late night channel, but the program name was different. It was probably changed by the game ring. After all the necessary procedures were done, Zhong Yi went to do the paperwork formalities for his hire. After he was done, it was already 10.30 a.m. Only then did he return to his office desk in the corner. A corner desk is usually popular amongst people, as the leader will not be able to see it, allowing one to skive. However, this corner was different. Firstly, it was not far from the entrance and secondly, there was a water fountain here. People came to and fro, which made it a busy spot. As a rookie, Zhong Yi could not do anything. Although his position as a radio host gave him wages higher than the office secretary or editors in the office, he was, after all, a rookie. No special seat would be left for him to choose. Tian Bin was sitting across from him with a board separating them. Zhong Yi looked around, as he had nothing to do. No one had given him any work, so he stood up and asked, Brother Tian, what do you think I should do or learn? Tian Bin glanced at him, but his expression was clearly no longer the same as the one he had in front of the leader. He did not care about him and said, familiarize yourself first. All right. Zhong Yi was not able to ask anything more. At noon in the station's cafeteria, Zhong Yi took the opportunity to greet his colleagues in the same office, hello, Sister Wang. I'm new, so please take care of me. Wang Xiaomei's gaze swept across his face and gave an unfeeling, ah, uh, before turning away. Zhong Yi had wanted to shake her hand, but now he got himself into an awkward position. 
Previously, he had gathered from everyone's conversations that Wang Xiaomai, who was about 30 years old, was one of the starlets of the office. She was the top girl in the literature channel. The talk about the world she hosted was the celebrity program that had the highest ratings of their channel. It was a humanities and history program where the past and present were discussed. Wang Xiaomai was good at hosting and her looks were good. Although she was not as ridiculously beautiful as Rao I mean, everyone who saw her would evaluate her as a beauty. Only Zhong Yi was not smitten by her, because although Wang Xiaomai looked pretty, she had no characteristics to her beauty. She was lacking in temperament, which made her pale in comparison to his landlady. For an entire day, Zhong Yi tried to build personal ties with people, but it was to no avail. It was as if everyone was not friendly with him. He seemed dispensable. Tian Bin was as such. Wang Xiaomai was as such, too. Only when it was time to knock off did Zhong Yi realize it when he happened to chance upon a conversation between the literature channels, phone editor, Tian Bin, and another beautiful woman. The beautiful woman was most likely Tian Bin's wife, as the two of them were holding hands. She had probably came to meet her husband after their work hours had ended. Brother Tian, how did Zhong Yi get hired? the phone editor asked. Tian Bin curled his mouth and shook his head, who knows? Just his looks makes him fail. The phone editor sighed, that's right. How can a person with such looks become a radio host? I seriously have no idea what the channel was thinking. I think I could do a better job than him. Tian Bin asserted, Zhong Yi will definitely not be famous. The phone editor echoed, let's not even talk about being famous. He might not even be able to get a program. All of our programs in the literature channel have permanent hosts. He can, at most, be a replacement host or a guest host to take over for someone who's sick. Do you think he can have his own program? I don't even think that will happen next year. Let him endure through it. He, if not for the previous replacement host being transferred to the news channel, would he have been hired with his looks? It would not even be his turn to enter the literature channel as a host. Tian Bin's wife laughed, even such a person was hired? What a joke. Tian Bin said, the leader even got me to lead him around. I don't have that time. His wife said, then just ignore him. If he doesn't have a program, the channel will probably transfer him to another department. The three of them walked as they chatted. They were unaware that Zhong Yi, who was by the company entrance, had heard them. Speaking ill of me behind my back? Still want to transfer me away? What sort of people are they? Clearly, the editor was jealous of Zhong Yi's good luck. The other radio hosts also did not think Zhong Yi would accomplish much. To them, Zhong Yi a replacement host, who was no different from any ordinary article. As a result, this scene unfolded. No one in the literature channel valued him. Who told you I won't be famous? Who told you that I can't go on programs? Wait and see. I'll let you open your eyes. People chased after fame and fortune in their lives. Zhong Yi was not greedy, as he only wanted fame and not money. He would put all of his effort and energy into becoming famous, heading towards his final goal that was set by the game ring settings, which was to become the greatest superstar in the world. Hard work would always pay off. By abandoning all desires and to only strive for fame, he did not believe that he could not make it big. As for other things, like money? Well, what is money? How can it be compared to being famous? He had always treated it like dirt. He really did not care about otherworldly things, such as money. He really did not care. Hey, wait! Zhong Yi suddenly stopped at the western entrance of the station. He had used his foot to step onto something. Seeing that no one was looking at him, he bent down and picked up a dime that someone had dropped on the floor. He surreptitiously stuffed it into his pockets before he carried on walking. Right, where was I? Oh, right. Who told you that I can't go on programs? Eh? Who told you that? Chapter 8, Trying the Unlucky Sticker A week passed. That afternoon, Zhong Yi was sitting in his office, eating by himself. His lunch was a bun, a bun, and a bun. Finishing three buns was enough to fill his stomach. After a few days of exploration, he was now familiar with his job, the equipment and the interpersonal relations in his department. 
Zhong Yi learned quite a lot. But of course, all of that was self learned. Tian Bin, who had been assigned by the leader to bring him around, had ignored him completely. After getting used to the work environment, Zhong Yi finished whatever was in hands, as he waited for an opportunity. He had not done a single program over the past week. It would even be good if he could be a stand in host, but all of the eight radio hosts were each healthier than the last. No one got into a car accident or got struck by lightning. Hi. Little Zhong, a person beside him, called out. Zhong Yi glanced over and said in a lukewarm fashion, What is the matter? He still remembered the feelings he had when he had seen this person for the first time. It was of great shock. There was a moment that Zhong Yi's mind unconditionally sprouted out of Frasians have finally invaded Earth. Right, go ahead and think what he looks like. This person's name was Li Sai. It was a very native name. It was ranked alongside Zhong San and Xiaoming as the three most widespread names in the country. The reason why Zhong Yi gave him such an attitude was because the person who had been speaking behind his back with the Tian Bin couple was this phone editor. He had even criticized Zhong Yi for his ugly looks. Just thinking of it made Zhong Yi want to laugh. Shouldn't you look at yourself in the mirror first? No matter how I look, I am at most average. What about you? No matter what, you can only be described with a poem. You are like the clouds in the sky. You are like the thick haze. You are like the bright moon. You are like the dust in the wind. Ah, uh, well you just aren't like a person. Li Sai put down a bunch of A4 paper. Brother Tian will be beginning a new novel on the program tonight. The last novel, Ghosts at the Zero Point, has finished recording and broadcasting yesterday. Today, we will begin with Recalling Spirits, and we have gotten the copyright for the story last week. The plan is to prepare for 50 episodes. This is the script for the first two episodes. The phone editor's job was generally to vet the listeners who call in during a live broadcast. However, nowadays, as it was mostly pre-recorded broadcasts, the phone editor's job was to do some text editing for some programs. Tian Bin's late-night ghost stories had always been arranged, annotated and audited by Li Sai. Zhong Yi said, why are you giving me this? Li Sai looked at him and said, help brother Tian to edit a few paragraphs. These paragraphs are a little political and the standards for broadcasting and publishing are different, so we need to edit it. Oh, I still need to mark up some words and other jobs. The program tonight will be broadcast live, so there isn't enough time. Zhong Yi had been assigned by the leader to be led by Tian Bin. Since he could not say no to this task, he took it and edited it. In the afternoon, just before getting off work, Zhong Yi had finished the editing and had also read the first few chapters of the novel. He found it average and very cliché. According to his understanding, Recalling Spirits was a very popular supernatural novel these days. The simplified Chinese edition had been selling like hotcakes, however, when Zhong Yi compared it to the supernatural tomb robbers novel in his mind, the difference was great. This world's supernatural novels were weaker in entertainment value and continuous suspense to the tomb robbers novel. When Zhong Yi checked the web to gain some understanding, he realized that this world did not have anything similar to tomb robbers. No one had written it, and the state of the novel industry was in its beginning stages and was lacking in richness. Suddenly, Tian Bin arrived for work. It was common for those who had night programs. Usually, the host who had caught up to the live broadcasts would only come to work in the afternoon or at night. Zhong Yi handed him the prepared scripts, it has been edited. He no longer called him, Brother Tian, as this fellow was a very vengeful person. Li Sai gave the task to you? Tian Bin read it once and said, oh, that will do. These modifications will do. He did not say any niceties. Li Sai arrived at this moment and discussed the script with Tian Bin. Just as Zhong Yi stood up to get off work, the work that he had been eagerly looking forward to for a week came. An assistant from the editor team came looking for Zhong Yi. After seeing him, the middle-aged man quickly stopped him, little Zhong, are you getting off work? Zhong Yi responded, yeah. The deputy said, hold on a while. I have something here. No worries. Tell me where you need me. As a rookie, he had to be more hardworking. Zhong Yi knew this deep down. 
the assistant looked at the documents in his hand, at night, besides the broadcast of the first episode of Late Night Ghost Stories, there will be another broadcast. It's the Golden Time Periods interview program. We have invited a guest, so there is a need for an additional host to help attune the mood. The Literature Channel only has you as a stand-in host. Ah, uh, I'm just not sure if you are up to the task. After all, you have just been here for a week and you might be lacking in experience. It would have been fine if it was a pre-recorded program, which we can fix by re-recording and editing the material. However, we can't do so for a live broadcast. If any problem happens, it's an on-air accident, so I need to make sure. John Yi immediately promised, I have no problems with it. I am already familiar with my work. You can rest assured. He had been waiting for this. The assistant from the editing team gave a faint, oh, and asked Tian Bin beside him, Teacher Tian, Little Zhong is led by you? Do you think he is up to the task? If you don't think there will be any problems, then I'll let him try it out. The people for the program have been rushing me and the broadcast will happen soon, so we are in a hurry to prepare it. Zhong Yi looked at Tian Bin. Zhong Yi was hired to be a broadcast host, so he had to go on a show one day. Now, he had the opportunity and, typically, people would not hinder his future prospects and would say some niceties. However, Tian Bin's reaction was far from expected. After staying silent for a few seconds, he frowned, he has just come and isn't familiar with the business. Forget it. Forget it? The assistant from the editing team was stunned and acknowledged it tersely. When Zhong Yi heard it, he turned annoyed, I'm a broadcasting major, and have had practical lessons, so I'm already very familiar. I know how to use all the equipment, too. Tian Bin interjected in a manner as if he was very experienced, Little Zhong, I know you are from a specialized major and have good foundations. However, a live broadcast is different. It tests one's spontaneity. You are still far from that and I'm saying this because I'm responsible for you. You should first slowly gain experience in broadcasting. With a simple sentence, he had destroyed the chance for Zhong Yi to go on a program. As for the reason, Tian Bin had obviously noticed that Zhong Yi's attitude towards him had changed. He didn't even call him Brother Tian. Tian Bin sneered in his heart and naturally took the opportunity to suppress him. The assistant from the editor team had no other alternative but to keep the program layout and say, All right, then our channel's teacher Chen doesn't have a program today, right? I'll get teacher Chen to make the appearance. With the opportunity lost, Zhong Yi immediately turned hostile, Teacher Tian, I have not offended you, right? You did not give me any help on my job to give me experience. You never answered my doubts. Now, you don't even know what my abilities are, and you say I won't do? You even took away the chance for me to be a last-minute assistant host? And you spoke behind my back to scheme against me? Did I kill your father or your mother? Is there a need to be this ruthless? Tian Bin did not expect Zhong Yi to dare to speak to him in such a manner and angrily said, you repeat that again. Li Sai also rushed forward and said, as a rookie, how can you speak to brother Tian like that? Are you rebelling? Everyone in the office turned their gazes towards them to watch the commotion. Everyone's eyes were staring, with no one coming forward to stop them. Tian Bin pointed at Zhong Yi, this kid can't even appreciate my kindness. I'm protecting you by not letting you go on air. It's to let you build up your experience. And you actually yelled at me. And still said that I schemed against you behind your back. Are you maligning me? Zhong Yi said coldly, you know what you said back then with Li Sai. The two began to quarrel and no one wanted to be in the weaker position. Finally, a few colleagues in the office came forward to stop them. Actually, everyone knew that Tian Bin had the bad habit of speaking behind people's backs so they knew that Zhong Yi would not have said this without reason. Furthermore, Zhong Yi was being asked to be a substitute host. Not only did Tian Bin not care bringing the rookie around, he had even made him do all his dirty work. And when the rookie finished the dirty work, you still didn't let him go on a program. This was indeed quite unreasonable. No matter who it was, they would definitely not be happy about this. Tian Bin and Li Sai walked out angrily. Zhong Yi stared at their backs as he scoffed. He knew that people had to tuck one's tail between one's legs and behave himself at times, however, when people bullied him, he would not be courteous to them. 
Tianbin had pushed it too far. Beat him? Then wait to get fired. Scold him? It was likely that would have the same end result. This was a job Zhong Yi had a hard time getting. He definitely could not lose it. He still needed to use the radio station as the first step to becoming famous. Wait! That unlucky sticker. Zhong Yi suddenly thought of the new item he had won at the lottery last week. He did not know how effective the item was and had never planned on using it. Whatever, since we're in this state, let's try using it on you. The game ring was what he would rely upon in the future. He had to understand how the items within were used and how effective they were. With his livelihood at risk, how could he not experiment? He really did not know how bad the bad luck would be. Chapter 9, The Extremely Unlucky Tian Bin Chapter title is a spoiler, highlight it to read it now, or see it at the bottom. After work. Hey, did you hear about it? I just went for dinner. What happened? The rookie nearly fought with Tian Bin. Ah? Seriously? What happened? Many people in the office began speaking in whispers. Everyone loved a commotion. Zhong Yi did not go home either. He rubbed the game ring to open his inventory and took out the chewing gum-like object he had previously taken out from a treasure chest. He opened the package. And at this moment, Tian Bin had come back in from outside. As the two of them sat across from each other, their seats were in close proximity to one another. If Tian Bin wanted to get to his seat, he had to pass by Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi quietly stuck the unlucky sticker onto Tian Bin's trousers with a finger. This thing could not be seen by anyone other than Zhong Yi. Pa! Tian Bin had the feeling that Zhong Yi had touched him when he walked past. However, when he looked down, he could see nothing, so he coldly glanced back at Zhong Yi. The game ring made an announcement. The unlucky sticker has been used. Effective for 5 minutes. Countdown begins. 459, 458. Although Zhong Yi's antics got on Tian Bin's nerves, his mood today was still good, overall. Recalling Spirits, was currently the most upward-trending ghost story and he had spent a lot of effort securing the audio and broadcast rights to the novel. A few other provinces' radio stations had launched a bidding war to secure the rights, but in the end, Tian Bin had won the rights. He had actually resorted to under-the-table methods and had went directly to the publisher, instead of the author, who was a rookie. He negotiated with the publisher's management and promised a higher price for the rights. As to how the publisher would negotiate the payout with the author, it was none of Tian Bin's business. He had only promised the publisher that the bid price would not be revealed to the author and that the station and the publisher would be the only ones gaining from this deal. Tian Bin saved no effort, as he wanted to make use of this novel to help boost the listenership of his late night ghost stories segment, attract more sponsorship, and gain a name for himself. Beep, beep. Another short message came. Tian Bin looked at his mobile phone. It was a message from the publisher's vice president, wishing success to Tian Bin's radio segment, as well as a reminder to not divulge the fees agreed upon for the novel's audio and broadcasting rights. Tian Bin smiled and, as he replied while he walked, something happened on the office desk to his left. A female colleague was thinking of taking her lunchbox and getting off work, but when she stretched out her arm, she did not pay attention, causing the lunchbox's lid to crash to the ground with a ding-dang sound. Tian Bin just happened to step on it and slip to the ground. With a slam, he crashed to the ground. Ah, yeah. Ah, teacher Tian. What are you doing? Sorry, are you all right? Tian Bin was in pain. But as he stood up, he waved his hand, forget it, forget it. He picked up the phone and saw that the message interface was gone, so he created a new message and typed, President Lee, please rest assured that we would not be asking about how you split the profits with the author. We will not be revealing our end of the deal with Lee Jen either. This is not our first time working together, so you can trust me. After writing this, Tian Bin scrolled to President Lee's contact to send out the message, but at this moment, the colleague opposite was preparing to knock off from work. When she was passing Tian Bin, she accidentally knocked into him. The silk fan she was holding fell and landed, spread out on the floor. Tian Bin lost his balance, stepped on the fan at the same time and then came crashing onto the ground once again. Brother Tian. I am so sorry. 
You. Are you, my back? What's going on? This time, people in the office paid more attention. Two falls in the space of a few seconds? How unlucky could it get? Tian Bin stumbled onto his feet, so angry that he wanted to give a good scolding. He took a look at his phone and realized that while he was falling just now, he had scrolled to the wrong contact, which just so happened to be the author, Li General President Li and him both had the surname of Li. Therefore, their contacts were just beside each other. Tian Bin felt really angry and planned on choosing the correct contact again. But all of a sudden, Li Sai walked up from behind at a fast pace, Brother Tian. Tian Bin turned his head around, Peng. The fluorescent light above his head exploded without a warning. The light tube's pieces came falling towards them and gave Li Sai a scare. His reflexes caused him to place his hand forward to protect himself, but instead hit Tian Bin on his chin. Tian Bin screamed out, Putong. As he fell backwards onto the ground, his hands tightened and, at the same time, the message was sent. Li Sai rushed to help him up, Brother Tian. Sorry. This. Tian Bin was nearly in tears, what are you doing? Do you not have eyes? Li Sai scratched his head and said, I'm sorry, Brother Tian. I wasn't aware. Who would have thought that the light would explode? But when he picked up the phone to take a look at the screen, Tian Bin's face changed. Damn it! How did it get sent? He wanted to save the situation, but it was already too late. This scene played out in front of Zhong Yi. He saw clearly with his eyes how Tian Bin fell and was knocked into. Their colleagues were laughing, thinking, what bad luck Tian Bin has today. Three times. He had fallen down three times. Didn't you check the almanac before leaving the house? But this was not the end. Just as the effects of the unlucky sticker was ending, the literature channel's person in charge rushed in. Tian Bin. Zhao Guoju called loudly. Tian Bin acknowledged, knowing that something was wrong, leader. Everyone looked over, without knowing what had happened. Zhao Guoju screamed, what the hell are you doing? A. The author of, Recalling Spirits, Li Jian, just called and demanded that the contract be voided and for us to stop the broadcast of his novel. And if we infringed upon his copyright, he will send us his lawyer's letter. Wasn't this matter supposed to be handled by you? Why has it become my problem now? Tian Bin didn't dare to say a word and just looked down. The rights for the novel, Recalling Spirits, were all with the author and the same went for the audio rights. It was down to trust that the author allowed the publisher to negotiate on his behalf. Therefore, strictly speaking, without the author's written permission, any agreements were not legal. This was how it was for, Recalling Spirits, and Tian Bin had only signed a contract with the publisher. If the author had taken his part of the payment, then the contract would have been in effect. But even so, if the author wanted to, he could have the contract voided. Zhao Guoju chided him for a full ten minutes. Finally, the literature channel's several managers arrived and everyone was discussing the issue at hand. Only then did Zhong Yi and the others understand what had just happened. It was now known that Tian Bin had an agreement with the publishers of Recalling Spirits for the novel's audio rights. He would keep the agreed price a secret from the author and let the publisher keep a part of the profits. Actually, this was very common in the industry. Even if Tian Bin did not purposefully hide the details, as long as the publisher did not mention it, the author would not have known. But somehow, Tian Bin's message with all the details of the deal was sent wrongly to the author. Isn't this a nail in the coffin? Isn't this disgusting? Cancelling the rights wasn't too much. If it were any other author who saw that message, the outcome would have been much worse. Tian Bin explained, Leader, this time it was my mistake, but I feel that we can continue with the broadcast. The contract has already been signed with the publisher, actually. Wang Xiaomai, who had not knocked off yet, replied with displeasure, Are you going to fight the court case? A head of the editorial team also chipped in, It definitely cannot be broadcasted. Who will be responsible when problems arise? They were a public institution and profits were not the main problem, responsibility was. Everyone was discussing back and forth, but finally Zhao Guoju slammed his hand on the board, changed the novel. All departments who have suitable ghost story resources, help out. Tonight's broadcast cannot be cancelled. Use the shortest time and settle the new novel's copyrights. 
Zhao Guoju pointed at Tian Bin's nose and said, It's all on you. Wait for your punishment. In contrast, Tian Bin looked like his father had just died. While Zhong Yi's anger simmered, he realized the unlucky sticker had only been in effect for five minutes. Just a short five minutes had passed and Tian Bin's luck became like this. This item is too miraculous. It looks like, in the future, besides the nickname, Zhong Jinkong, another nickname is necessary. Yes, how does, famous detective Kogoro Mori, sound? Chapter 10, Ghost Blows Out the Light, is born. Outside the office unit, the sky was completely dark. It was past 11 at night, and they were just less than 30 minutes away from the live broadcast at midnight. Has it not been done? Leader, I really can't find one. You have to find one, even if you can't. Look at what time it is. Yes. Then, then I'll try again. I will do my best. Many people in the office worked overtime. More than 10 people hurried about, trying to save the situation. If an idiom was used to describe the situation, it would be, all hell broke loose. Leader. Tian Bin asked carefully. Zhao Guoju waved his hand, go to the broadcasting studio and wait there first. Li Sai ran inside the office and said, there's still no way. I have inquired about more than 10 supernatural novels. Their audio rights have been sold to other websites or radio stations. I have also contacted the Beha province's radio station regarding some of their novels, hoping to broadcast them in a cooperative manner, but they refused. Also, there are some more common horror novels, but due to the tight time schedule, there is no way of contacting them. Some of them don't even have a way of contacting them. Zhao Guoju slammed the table, there's not a single book. Li Sai said bitterly, supernatural novels are now in short supply. The market is still in its nascent stages and there are only just slightly more than 10 books that are mature works. Radio stations from everywhere are snatching them up, too. An editor said, the worst situation is for us to delay one to two episodes. We can then buy the copyright for them over these two days. Following that, we can resume broadcasting when we have the contract signed. Zhao Guoju said fiercely, this program has been ongoing for five years without a break. If it goes off the air, who will take up the responsibility? Besides, we have advertised the program over the past few days. Three of our channels have been continuously promoting the new novel for today's late-night ghost stories. Who doesn't know that the most important day of a novel is its first day? Although people do not know what book is to be broadcast, with such widespread publicity, there would at least be four to five times the usual listenership waiting for the broadcast today. Halt the broadcast? Are you going to say it? Today's program has to be broadcast, regardless of anything. Hurry and try to make contact. I don't believe that we can't sign a single supernatural novel. As, Recalling Spirits, was the hottest supernatural story today, the station had struck the iron while it was hot by promoting it. They had never expected that this large-scale promotional campaign had turned into a noose around their own necks. Tian Bin said softly, if we really can't make it in time, then... Zhao Guoju shouted, even if you can't make it in time, you still have to make it. Since this trouble was caused by you, wipe your own ass. Tian Bin did not dare to make a sound as his forehead sweated profusely. He felt oppressed, but he could not release his anger. Who knew that such coincidences would happen? If he had not slipped due to that lunchbox lid, he would not have closed the message window with President Li and he would not have sent the message to the wrong person. If he had not fallen because of a colleague that brushed past him, he would not have chosen the wrong name. If the fluorescent light did not explode and cause Li Sai to hit him, he would not have wrongly pressed the send button. Tian Bin had never bungled up so badly in his entire life. However, with all these coincidences happening at the same time, Tian Bin found it very odd. Now with the program on the brink of a major incident, Tian Bin might even be faced with disciplinary action. He did not know how he had offended the heavens. Why was he being toyed with? Tian Bin looked at Zhong Yi, as if he had seen a ghost. Ever since he had an argument with Zhong Yi, he had been unlucky. Midnight. Number 5 Live Broadcast Studio. This was the literature channel's dedicated broadcast studio that was very well equipped. Zhong Yi and another staff member entered to test the devices. The staff member checked the headset, while Zhong Yi tested the microphone. 
There were still 10 minutes to go, before the live broadcast entered countdown. Without the novel's copyrights, there was no way to proceed with the live broadcast. What was there to say? This was not some talk show, where one could talk anything under the sun. This was a ghost story program. People switched on their radios late at night just to listen to this. Without any material, there was no way of going through with it. Across the studio was a transparent glass with a soundproof room on the other side. Typically, that was where the phone editor sat a day. After finishing his job, Zhang Yi went over. Zhao Guoju, Tian Bin, and company began to enter, one after the other. A female assistant alerted them, there are still three minutes remaining. Zhao Guoju said to Tian Bin, go on up. Tian Bin's intestines had turned green, leader. How, how can I go on up? I can't say anything without a story. Zhao Guoju, who was also experiencing tremendous amounts of pressure right now, bellowed, do you think that I don't know you can't say anything without a story? But what can we do now? A. You tell me what I can do. Pointing towards the studio, he said, quickly go in there. The program will be for an hour. I don't care how you are going to hoodwink it, but just do it. There's no way to hoodwink for an hour. Tian Bin refused to go on up. His other colleagues looked at each other. Up until now, there was not a single solution. The female assistant looked at the time, there's still another minute. 59 seconds, 58 seconds. Wang Xiaomai, who was the literature channel's top star and one of the backbones of the channel, had also stayed behind. Seeing that Tian Bin had not moved from his seat, she reprimanded him, quickly. If you don't even go on air for your program, then it will be a broadcasting incident. Think carefully. A lesser leader of the literature channel also said, go on up first, before saying anything. Tian Bin still remained motionless. His expression was miserable. The female assistant reported the time quickly, there's still 10 seconds, 9 seconds. At this moment, Zhang Yi suddenly clenched his teeth and made a decision. You can't do it. You may not be able to do it, but I can. Wasn't he still gloomy about not being able to have a program? Wasn't this an opportunity for himself? No novel's copyright had been given to them. Zhang Yi still remembered a few tomb raiding stories from his world. Although he did not know if that world's novels would work in this world, he had to at least try. Taking in a long, deep breath, he primed his expression. His entire aura changed. As the female assistant was counting down the time, Zhong Yi took three steps first and then two steps into the studio. With his ass on the seat, he pushed the button that controlled the audio volume as he wore the headset. Everyone was stunned, with their mouths agape. Little Zhong. What are you doing? Why did you go on up? Everybody did not understand what Zhong Yi was doing. Without a single word of a novel script, how was he to do a program? Are you going to have a live broadcast just like this? Are you trying to pull something from thin air? Only Tian Bin heaved a sigh of relief and felt lucky. Three seconds. Two seconds. One second. The live broadcast began. With it done, no one could pull Zhong Yi out. The hearts of Zhao Guoju and many others were now in their throats. How was Zhong Yi, who was a rookie that had just started work a few days ago, going to resolve this situation that had such a huge mishap? Who knows if it would turn out even worse? Leaving it up to fate, Zhao Guoju and company gave up. On the other hand, Zhong Yi appeared calm and, in fact, seemed slightly excited. He calmly said, Hello, everyone. This is the Late Night Ghost Stories program. I will be your DJ today, Zhong Yi. With the last novel that was highly appreciated coming to an end, we will usher in a new work today, Ghost Blows Out the Light. Ghost Blows Out the Light? What was that? Zhao Guoju and company were stunned. Zhong Yi adjusted his tone and said with a low, deep voice. Introduction. Grave robbing is not like touring, composing poetry, or creating art, we can't be that elegant, leisurely, adoring or respectful. Grave robbing is a technical skill, a skill for breaking. Zhong Yi said it neither quickly, nor slowly as he narrated, all of these stories began with an incomplete book my father left me. That book is that mystic secret of feng shui, yin and yang in 16 characters. 
however, no one knows what happened to the last part of the book, the only thing left is the first part. What's in the book is mainly about the secrets of how to read geomancy and the structure of tombs. The words and the tone used were very steady. Zhong Yi had chosen this book firstly because, Ghost Blows Out the Light, did not exist in this world. Secondly, this book had been really popular. Be it in its sales and or its resounding response, it was number one in Zhong Yi's world at the time it was published. Ignoring the comparison with other supernatural novels, it had led far ahead, when compared against the most mainstream romantic novels back then. Thirdly, it was because back when he was practicing how to go off script and recite, he had used this book. Thus, he could still faithfully recite the content at the beginning of the novel. Even if there were mistakes or errors in his memory, it would not matter too much, as it did not affect the plot. Chapter 11, Having His Own Program On air As Zhong Yi narrated the story, he spoke more quickly. It was at least much faster than Qian Bin's speed. This was like how the personalities of people differed. Narrating a chapter also depended upon one's character. Most of the time, Zhong Yi described the story at a fast to very fast pace. Of course, at important parts of the story, he would slow down when it was required. First chapter. The Funeral Doll. My grandfather is called Hu Guohua and his ancestors were large landowners known far and wide. During their most glorious period, they purchased in the city three alleys that linked together 40 houses. They were also involved in some politics and trade, donating provisions and assisting in transportation. Outside. Everyone did not know what was going on. No one had expected Zhong Yi to take over the job of narrating a ghost story and they were worried. From listening to the first few paragraphs, no one had much anticipation for the story's content. Was this a supernatural novel? It was too plain. Was this an autobiography? After describing for so long, it was all matters regarding the main character's grandfather? And grave robbing was mentioned earlier on. Was robbing graves considered supernatural? There had never been such a novel of this type before. To them, only works that had been accepted by the market and had experienced the trial by fire of readers were considered good. However, John Yee's grave robbing novel was something they had never heard of. As such, they immediately labeled it as something that was not up to mark. However, this view only lasted for 10 minutes. When John Yee described described how the funeral paper doll made by the craftsman came to life and asked to marry Hu Guohua, Wang Xiaomai felt a shudder. Zhao Guizhou's gaze turned serious as the entire atmosphere of the studio chilled down. The funeral paper doll had let Hu Guohua dig up her grave for riches. Eventually, when Hu Guohua could not resist the temptation, his liver was eaten by the paper doll. When the plot reached this intense point, everyone's breathing had also tensed up. Tian Bin was stunned when he heard this. As this was a midnight program, many people working for the channel did not listen to it. Most people would have slept by that time, hence, they would not know much about ghost stories. However, Tian Bin was a DJ who narrated such stories. He dabbled with all these ghostly stories on a daily basis, so he had the ability to distinguish things. Initially, he had deemed it impossible for this grave-robbing novel to have any market, as it had never appeared before. But as he listened, Tian Bin felt his paws contract. It was as if Zhong Yi's mouth emitted a chill. The story had captured Tian Bin immediately. Was this an original work of his? How could this be possible? He could write such stories? Tian Bin did not believe. Neither could Wang Xiaomai and company believe. Only Zhao Guoju had a vague idea of the situation. Thinking back to how Zhong Yi composed the poem, The Song of the Stormy Petrel, during the interview, Zhong Yi had managed to surprise all of the interviewers. This was a very talented person. Else how could he be granted special permission to be hired with his looks? Zhao Guoju had grabbed Zhong Yi from Li Honglian's hands forcefully into his literature channel. Now, it seemed like he was prescient. One o'clock in the morning. An hour passed by very quickly. The number of people outside were the same as before. No one, including Zhao Guoju, had left early. They were all listening to the story. The female assistant gestured to Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi nodded to signal that he got the message and he stopped his story at a suitable spot, dear listeners. That will be all for today's broadcast.
I welcome you to carry on listening in for the story tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. This is your DJ, John Yi. Pushing a button to broadcast music, John Yi took off his headset and heaved a sigh of relief. It would have been a lie if he said he was not nervous. He had made some mistakes during the process and nearly embarrassed himself. Thankfully, he had the basic foundations, hence Zhong Yi was still pretty satisfied with his first broadcast. There was still some room for a few flaws. A staff member walked in quickly. What followed was a replay of prime time programs, so he had to adjust the equipment. Zhong Yi walked towards the room that Zhao Guoju and company were in. After pushing the door open, he first apologized, leader, sorry. I took the initiative to take over the broadcast without discussing with everyone. Mainly it was because there was no time. I did not want the program to have any broadcast incidents and go off air, too, so I suddenly thought of a plot and idea I previously had. I followed my thoughts and narrated the story. Since it's my original work, then it would not cause any problems with copyright. I also thought pretty simply, uh, anyways, sorry to everyone. If the higher-ups want to pursue the matter, I will take full responsibility for it. No one had any response as they were silent. John Yi blinked his eyes, leader, I. Suddenly, Zhao Guoju raised his hands and slowly clapped. A middle-aged man in the editing team also raised his hand and clapped vigorously. Following that, a round of applause sounded. It caused quite a commotion in the radio station's building late at night. Zhao Guoju grabbed Zhong Yi's shoulders and smiled. Are you still apologizing? You have saved this situation at such an opportune time. Without you going on up, we don't even know what would have happened to the program. Besides, your ghost blows out the light was written so well. There's nothing to say about the quality and neither can I pick on your language. I find it much better than the supernatural novels that our station has to pay top dollar for. Great, I knew I did not make a mistake choosing you. John Yi immediately said, thank you. I'm flattered. The female assistant also grinned, revealing her canines, as she secretly gave John Yi a thumbs up. Li Sai's eyebrows were knitted tightly. Tian Bin was also not in a good mood as he stared coldly at John Yi. Zhao Guoju clapped his hands to attract everyone's attention. All right, everyone has been busy all night. You have all worked hard today, so go home and take a rest. Again, he spoke to Zhong Yi, Little Zhong, do you still have a follow-up to this story? Tomorrow you can just carry on narrating it. Late-night ghost stories will temporarily be hosted by you. Me? This program was temporarily mine. There was no need to mention Zhong Yi's pleasant surprise. He was, of course, overjoyed. He had just started work for a week and was a rookie amongst rookies. Without any experience, he was given a program that he could call his own. He had seized the opportunity at the most opportune time as he immediately said, thank you for the leader's trust. I will definitely do well. Tian Bing could not accept hearing this, leader, letting him host. Then, what about me? Zhao Guoju said impatiently, what about you? You didn't even dare to sit on the seat during the last few seconds. If not for Little John rescuing the situation, we would have a live broadcast incident. You shall be a stand-in host for now. And take some time to reflect. After covering his mouth to yawn a few times, he walked out tiredly. Leader! Tian Bin shouted. Zhao Guoju went home without even looking back. Wang Xiaomai stared deeply at Zhong Yi, before returning. Zhong Yi glanced and said to Tian Bin, Teacher Tian, I'm sorry. I will consult you if there is anything I do not know in the future. He did not kick Tian Bin while he was down and did not turn arrogant upon being successful. He calmly said some pleasantries. Zhong Yi was pretty impressed with his own bearing. Look at me being so refined. Tian Bin was so angry that his eyebrows were tightly knitted. Earlier that day, Tian Bin had been all powerful and had repressed the rookie, Zhong Yi, due to his qualifications. In a few hours, his program had been taken over by John Yi. With winners crowned and losers vilified, it could be said that nothing could be taken for granted in this world. Tian Bin bit his molars as he believed that it was still to be determined as to who had the last laugh. The most important thing was to see the listenership ratings when they were released tomorrow. If the first day's rating was still at the bottom, even after all the promotions, 
then Zhong Yi might be kicked away even if he did not make a mistake. After facing disciplinary action, the program would still be Tian Bin's. Chapter 12, Title Like Good Comments from Listeners The next day, Zhong Yi squeezed in the subway to get to work. He heard two men, who had just got on the train, speaking nearby. The topic of conversation made Zhong Yi's ears perk up. Old Zhao, did you listen to Late Night Ghost Stories last night? Of course, I did. I listened to that program every night without fail. A, I thought you didn't listen to the radio. I don't listen to it, but my wife does. Yesterday, she forcefully made me accompany her and had me listen to the program. You should know my wife, right? She has so much courage. If she sees a gangster late at night on the street, just her voice will scare the gangster away. She listens to ghost stories just so she can sleep. She had never felt so afraid before. And strangely, yesterday, they had broadcast a new ghost blows out the light, which scared her so much that she woke me up. I told her not to listen to it if it's so scary and just switch it off, but she refused and was adamant about tuning in. Ha ha, yesterday's ghost blows out the light was awesome. Although I was not fear stricken, I did find it creepy deep down inside and could not sleep well. It was very good. I also accompanied my wife and listened till 1 am. It was indeed good. I will carry on tuning in today. I really want to know what happens in the tomb later. That host is a rookie, right? His name is Zhong Yi? I find his narration very good. His speed was very appropriate, as the host from before spoke too slowly. As the two people continued to chat, they did not know that the Zhong Yi they were discussing was just a few meters away from them. Zhong Yi felt good hearing that. This feeling was so good. Opening his game screen to look at his reputation, it was now at 10,677. Having bought the second lottery ticket yesterday, his reputation had been depleted all the way down to zero. His reputation had grown by more than 10,000 in a night. One had to know that ever since Zhong Yi was born, he had only managed to gain 200,000 reputation in his more than 20 years of living. Now, with just a night's time, he had nearly matched what he had previously gained in a year. This speed was indeed very fast. There was indeed no mistake in choosing a radio station as his first step towards becoming famous. Besides, his reputation would slowly increase. It would increase by one or two sporadically. It was the standard practice that every episode of Late Night Ghost Stories would be edited by specialized staff before they placed the recording on the radio station's website. Clearly, the gradual increase in reputation was from people who did not listen to the live broadcast the previous night, and were instead from people who listened to the sound bite on the website and gave reputation points to Zhong Yi if they found it good. Getting off the subway and onto the platform. Zhong Yi first went to a roadside store to buy cigarettes. His addiction was not too bad, as he would smoke two sticks whenever he encountered a good situation. What cigarettes do you want? the boss asked. Still Red River? This was the cigarette brand that Zhong Yi usually smoked. However, realizing that he was now at least a celebrity, smoking a six Chinese yuan cigarette did not match his status as a successful radio host and a would-be famous world celebrity. Smoking a six Chinese yuan cigarette would be too embarrassing. A celebrity had to appear like a celebrity. They had to display their financial ability and their social image at every moment. As such, Zhong Yi waved his hand, give me a pack of double red joy, all right, this pack is six Chinese yuan and fifty cents. Reaching the office. There were many colleagues who had dark circles under their eyes, as they had worked overtime until very late yesterday. Zhong Yi entered and was already accustomed to being ignored by everyone. He was preparing to take his seat to begin working. Now that he had his own program, it could be considered a promotion, so he naturally had a lot more things to do. Little Zhong, you've come? Good morning, Teacher Zhong. I heard the program. It was awesome. Right, I could not come back yesterday, as I had something going on. I also listened back at home. I heard that it is an original work of yours? And without a script? Speaking whatever you thought on the spot? Amazing! No ordinary person can go on a live broadcast without a script. Teacher Zhong is from a specialized major, so this is nothing. 
A few colleagues smiled and greeted Zhong Yi. Their attitude was very friendly. Zhong Yi did not make a timely reaction. Teacher Zhong? What teacher Zhong? Are they, calling me that? Realizing this, Zhong Yi quickly turned humble, Teacher Qian, Teacher Wu, Brother Wu, please don't call me teacher. I'm still new and I'm just a student. I still need to learn a lot from all you seniors. Just calling me little John would do. As a person working in the media industry and someone facing the public, teacher was a form of salutation. It was not too much, but John Yi knew his boundaries. With his present qualifications, other people may respect him by calling him teacher, but he could not accept it. By exchanging pleasantries, this was the first time John Yi actually had a deep exchange with his colleagues. The reason was clear. Previously, people ignored Zhong Yi because he was just a stand-in DJ. He did not have the looks, so no one thought he could make it big, hence, no one bothered to build a relationship with him. But now, things were different. Tian Bin had made a mistake and Zhong Yi had saved the situation at the last minute, preventing a broadcast incident. His story was also very good and he was temporarily made the host of the program. He had went from being a substitute to a main host, so the attitude of his colleagues naturally had a subtle change. Was this how the world worked? The way humans reacted was normal, so Zhong Yi did not make a fuss about it. Of course, there were still many in the office who pretended Zhong Yi did not exist. This was in the character of some of them, while there were others whose work had nothing to do with Zhong Yi. Although everyone shared an office, they all had different responsibilities. A portion of them even had good relations with Tian Bin. Behind him, a female clerk walked over with a cardboard box in her hands. Inside, there were stacks of bound letters. After passing some letters to a few program hosts, she came by to the corner and was about to put the letters on Tian Bin's table through habit, but after thinking it over and seeing that Tian Bin was not around, she glanced at Zhong Yi and passed them to him. Teacher Zhong, these are letters from the listeners of Late Night Ghost Stories. Some of the letters are for Teacher Tian. As the postal service was slow, some of them were received only today. Some of them are yours. They were mailed out by the listeners early this morning. Zhong Yi said, Thank you. You're welcome. The female clerk walked away. Zhong Yi breathed in as he opened the letters. It was like the experience of a newly wedded bride. The first letter was written by a child. His words were crooked and very innocent, Hello, Teacher Zhong. The story you narrated is so good. My mother had wanted me to go to sleep early and even beat me up, but I still did not switch off the radio and listen to it secretly under the blanket. I will listen to Ghost Blows Out the Light from now on, daily. Zhong Yi smiled and, with some thought, he picked a pen and wrote, I am Zhong Yi. Thank you for your letter. You should sleep early and listen to your mother. Don't stay up late at night. Late Night Ghost Stories is uploaded on the Literature Channel's website, so you can listen to the broadcast online. After he finished writing, he found the female clerk and received her help in sending his response to the young listener, according to the sender's address. After returning to his seat, he carried on reading his letters. Second letter, today's story is better than all the trash ghost stories from before by 10,000 times. This is the supernatural novel that resides in my heart. Third letter, I am a taxi driver who works the night shift. Ghost Blows Out the Light is an awesome story. I will continue supporting it. Fourth letter, this is the best supernatural novel I have ever heard. I just want to say thank you to the program team. Thank you, Teacher Zhong. I finally do not find the nights boring. There were more than ten letters and Zhong Yi read each and every one of them. He picked out three letters to respond to. He then switched on his computer so that he could read the letters in his email inbox. Ever since taking over late night ghost stories, someone had given him the password to the program's inbox. After logging in, he realized that there were more than 80 unread emails. This mail was not written as formally as the handwritten letters he had received. There was more online slang. Lulu 59, Ghost Blows Out the Light is too cool. Edska 115, great, 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 great. QQQRY, Teacher Jong, say a bit more each day. I strongly request for the program to be extended. 
I have already recommended, Ghost Blows Out the Light, to many of my classmates and friends. I will be calling all of them up at night, to ask them to tune in. Hee hee, I'll give you a like, and be your fan in the future. So many good comments. Zhong Yi found it to be extremely beautiful. Look at this. Look at this. This is the voice of the people. Chapter 13, the listenership rating for the program explodes. At 9 a.m., it was time to work. Zhong Yi was busy replying to letters from his listeners. Tian Bin and Li Sai walked in together, late by a few minutes. But in an institution like this, the rules were more lax than in the private sector. After Tian Bin arrived, the atmosphere became a little awkward. Everyone's attention was focused on both Tian Bin and Zhong Yi. As victors were always more gentlemanly, Zhong Yi made his greeting, as if nothing had happened, Teacher Tian, good morning. It was as though they had not quarreled the day before. Tian Bin ignored him, thinking begrudgingly, that Zhong. Don't get too see asterisk CKY. That ghost blows out the light, might not get you anywhere. Grave robbing? This was something illegal. These two words are already not positive and you are finished if the listeners do not accept it. When the ratings reach a new low, it will be time to get off your high horse. You won't be jumping around for much longer. The listenership ratings will be announced soon. Wait and see. Tian Bin was waiting for the listenership ratings. Zhong Yi was waiting for them, too. He, too, didn't really know how accepting the listeners were. Although he had received a lot of letters of praise, there were still some critics, some of which were quite harsh. Although this was just a small sample of the audience, what the actual results were still depended upon the whole listener base. The door outside opened and Zhao Guoju walked in with his pot belly as he came for his inspection. He passed on some instructions to his old comrades and spoke with an editor, before setting his eyes on Zhong Yi with a little laugh, Little Zhong. Ah, uh, yesterday's performance wasn't too bad. Whether the rating is good or bad, your story was just too timely. Speaking of this, he spoke to someone, oh, right. Are the ratings for yesterday out? Why didn't anyone give it to me? Wang Xiaomai raised her head, I just came from upstairs. They are still at it, but it should be ready soon. Suddenly, the female assistant, Xiaofang, who helped Zhong Yi the night before, briskly walked in with a form. The moment she stepped in, she took a quick look at Zhong Yi and handed the form to Zhao Guoju, leader, the ratings have been released. These are the overall statistics for yesterday. Zhao Guoju acknowledged it and took a look, but he couldn't help but be taken aback, did you take the correct one? Xiaofang, with a wry smile, said, of course, I did. The statistics department directly handed it to me. While saying that, her eyes drifted over to Zhong Yi's direction again. The leader's comment could not help but stir up everyone's curiosity. Well? Was there anything wrong with the ratings? Everyone, stop your work for a bit. I will be announcing the rankings. This was a daily affair of the Literature Channel. Zhao Guoju would, almost without fail, announce daily the rankings for the previous day, so as to apply pressure on everyone. The top-ranked star segments with high listenership had high advertising fees and high bonuses. Segments that ranked at the bottom faced the risk of being cut, like Tian Bin's hosted segment, Late Night Ghost Stories, previous novel, Ghosts of Midnight. There were many parts in the middle which had been edited out and the ending was directly broadcasted. All in all, a total of over 10 episodes were removed due to the lack of listeners. There was no choice. The station always replayed the day's programs after 1 a.m., meaning that Late Night Ghost Stories was the last program of the day. Listener numbers were already limited due to this reason. How many people would want to listen to the radio this late at night? Segments that appeared very late at night, like this one, would never have a chance to be compared with the segments that were broadcasted between the golden hours of 7 and 8 p.m. The amount of people listening in could even reach a result that had a difference of 10 times. Including the weekend, the Literature Channel had slightly over 20 segments in total. Late Night Ghost Stories was always ranked at around 20th place, which meant it was either first or second if you were to count from the back. Even a lightning strike wouldn't be able to move it. It was not that the segment was bad. They had the most loyal listeners amongst all of the literature channel segments. 
It all boiled down to the extremely limited audience base and late-night timing, so how could it ever fight for a place among the top spots? It would definitely be an international joke. John Yi eagerly looked on with hope, but without any ambition. As long as it was not in last place, he would be fine with the result. Zhao Guizhu announced, first place, talk about the world. This was Wang Xiaomei's segment. She and her team were not surprised. Several years had passed with Wang Xiaomei's segment always being ranked at the top, without losing its place even once. Not only at their own station's literature channel, the amount of ratings received was one of the highest amongst the Beijing radio station's radio channels. It had a prime time slot and a pretty female host, so other than the traffic and news channels, her segment had always outdone all the other segments. Second place. Zhao Guizhu read from the list, Entertainment Daily. The literature channel, which included the entertainment circle's news, could not be compared with the news channel in terms of its audience base. But they had their own fixed audience base, as well. This segment was also a standard fixture for second place. It was time to reveal the third place. But Zhao Guizhu held back for a long while, like he was reading off the ratings graph. Old Zhao, one of the managers who was close to him said suspiciously. Zhao Guizhu remained in his paused state for a short moment before announcing, third place. Stretching his tone, he finally said, the third place goes to. Late Night Ghost Stories. What? Late Night Ghost Stories, place third? Upon hearing this, Tian Bin freaked out from the inside. He was still wondering if Zhang Yi could carry on the tradition of being in the last place, but somehow the results were as such. Were the statistics compiled incorrectly? That must be it, a compilation error. He knew his segment the best of anyone here. Tian Bin was wondering, how could this unpopular program, which was on its deathbed, achieve such a high listenership? Li Sai was staring out of his gaping wide eyes. Zhang Yi did not expect such a result either and was shocked by it. Not to mention anyone else, the whole office was temporarily in shock. No one could believe their own ears. Late Night Ghost Stories, place third? This is not a joke, right? This segment was always ranked last or the second to last in the literature channel. All right, as this was the first broadcast for a new story and the promotions were more than ever before, logically, the listenership would increase a lot. This was because listeners would always be curious and a new story would always attract them to find out what story would be broadcast. If it was any good, they would continue listening in, otherwise, they wouldn't. Thereafter, the listeners would dwindle in number before settling on a steady number. But even if a new story could increase the ratings, this was too much of an exaggeration. Straight to third place? Even doing better than the 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Segments? Doesn't this mean that all the listeners pulled in by the promotions never turned off or changed channels once they heard the beginning of Late Night Ghost Stories? Almost all of them were retained by this story. That reason allowed the ratings average to be pulled up by so much. Even Wang Xiaomai, who was the host with the best ratings, reacted to this. Even her segment could not retain all of its listeners. Who doesn't switch channels if they found the program boring? That's why, even when the listenership rating was high at the beginning of the segment, it would slowly decrease towards the last half hour of the segment and, as such, the average rating would go down by at least half. But what's with late night ghost stories? The average listenership was too scary. Instantaneously, everyone looked at Zhong Yi differently. A rookie who had just arrived, a novel ghost blows out the light that no one had ever heard of. These led to the late night segment securing third place in the ratings? Holy asterisk 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 asterisk. You must be on drugs. Chapter 14, a late night segment has actually turned popular. Those are the top three for ratings. Zhao Guizhu was very pleased. He praised, I would like to now commend the team for late night ghost stories, especially Little Zhong. For a late night segment to achieve a placing in the top three for its first broadcast, it is unprecedented and should be entered into the record books. I've seen the listenership ratings graph and there isn't much of a difference between the upper and lower ratings throughout the program. Starting from midnight, it was always on a high and this shows the affirmation the listeners have about the plot. And because of the explosion of the late night ghost stories, this channel's overall rating also rose. Let's have a round of applause for Little Jong and wish that he would keep working harder.
Ba ba ba. Everyone reacted with applause. But Tian Bin did not move, he couldn't accept the truth. Zhong Yi clasped his hands in appreciation, it's all thanks to the leader's help and everyone's support, it wasn't down to me alone. Talk about the world, listenership 3.17%. Entertainment Daily, listenership 2.29%. Late Night Ghost Stories, listenership 0.98%. Laughter Daily, listenership 0.92%. People's Broadcast Station News Highlights, Affiliate Broadcast, listenership 0.89%. 6th place, 7th place, the ratings had very little difference. This time, the segment in last place was Old and Young Story Club, taking over the last place position of Late Night Ghost Stories, with a listenership of 0.27%. After Zhao Guoju finished announcing, he summarized the previous day's results before letting everyone return to their work. Zhong Yi sat back down and got himself busy. On the surface, he was calm. But inside, he was bursting with excitement. If no one was around, he would have smiled until his mouth went crooked. Only after it sunk in did he calm down and analyze the reasons for the program's popularity. The most important reason should have been because of market and environmental factors. The ghost stories and supernatural novels of this world were still in their infancy stages, so not many good works have appeared, yet. The ones that could be considered good numbered around four or five novels. In John Yi's view, these top novels would only be considered to be SOSO, therefore, the market still hungered for more. Now, John Yi had brought to them a story full of novelty about grave robbing, a story that was already tested and well received in his world. The key was that this story was being first released on radio. It was an original story that was not available anywhere else in the market and so it was not in anyone's imagination that it would achieve such great results. That afternoon, the recording schedule was confirmed. The female assistant, Xiaofang, came looking for Zhong Yi while holding a slip, smiling sweetly, Teacher Zhong, it's time to do the recording for tonight's program. You have room 7 from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Don't go any later than 11.40 a.m., because there is another recording after that. Well, in the afternoon, room 8 has a lot of free slots. If you are up for it, I will book the timings for you. We can book three hours at the most. Zhong Yi considered this, okay, then thanks for the trouble. Book it for however long it is available for. I will try to record three broadcasts by today. Of course, it would be good to prepare a few broadcasts in advance while in good health and spirits, rather than to rush at a later time. Besides, in this line of work, having one's voice in a good condition was imperative. If he caught a cold, it would definitely affect the quality of the broadcast, so it was better to be prepared. Sure. Xiaofang blinked, then, should I help to prepare your manuscripts? Zhong Yi waved his hands, saying, no need for that. I don't have any manuscripts. Let's go straight to recording. No manuscripts. Xiaofang couldn't help but look at him admiringly. Even the colleagues around who heard that were impressed. Ignoring the composition skills of the newly arrived teacher Zhong, just his off-script reading skill was one of a kind in the Beijing radio station. Even for programs that demanded spontaneity like interviews, the host would still require a script of some sort for a guide, not to mention a program like storytelling. Tian Bin watched with envious fury. Look how everyone is behaving. It's just a good result for the first broadcast and that's to be expected. I don't believe that the next few broadcasts will bring such high ratings. The station had been promoting it so strongly, so, of course, the first broadcast would be highly rated. Tian Bin also had a broadcast for a novel last year and on the first day of the broadcast, he had received ninth place. But the next few broadcasts' ratings dropped exponentially by the day. In the end, it became last place as usual. Such is the law of programs in the late night segment and no one has ever managed to escape the claws of this curse. Wait and see what happens tomorrow and the day after. I will watch you cry when that happens. Tian Bin was already confident of his judgment. Other literature channel colleagues, even Zhao Guoju, had similar thoughts. Luck probably played a part for its first broadcast rating. No matter what, this was a late night segment, a midnight segment, in fact. This timing had the lowest audience numbers, so the ability to take third place would be lost for sure. It would even be normal for it to slip to around the 10th place. 
however, the way the situation progressed caught everyone by surprise. There was a slight dip in the listenership for the second episode of, Ghost Blows Out the Light. After all, even the best things would not be well liked by everyone. If there were people who liked it, there would be people who disliked it. It could not be forced. After listeners who contributed to the first episode's listenership rating left, the results dropped to the segment to sixth place for the entire channel. However, immediately following the third episode of Ghost Blows Out the Light, it ushered in another explosive breakthrough. It returned, once again, back to the third spot in the entire channel. Very clearly, although a small fraction of listeners had left, a large group of listeners gradually came in to replace them. John Yee's deep voice flowed from the radio, thousands of pieces of timber were used to build up a pyramidal tower that stood above ground. There were red sparkling stars above the tower and, using the weak light to see, the foundation of the wooden tower was about 200 meters wide, made of cement. Thousand-year-old cedar wood was used to build the tower's body and it had a total of nine floors. Each floor was filled with dried skeletons, wearing all sorts of strange ancient costumes. There were people of all ages and genders. Each piece of wood was engraved with Tibetan runes. Is this a tomb? Who could have built a tomb of this size underground? Many listeners in the city of Beijing felt an eerie chill while listening nearby their radios. Zhong Yi was listening to his own program at home, too, while checking the internet for messages and comments, enjoying it thoroughly. I'm finished. I won't be able to sleep, again, tonight. Me, too. This part is too exciting. Can you not leave us with a cliffhanger? Why did it end here today? Strongly requesting for a bit more. I will not be able to sleep at ease. The listener's feedback was very positive. The posters included the old, the young, both males and females. It covered almost all ages. About 10 minutes after the program ended, John Yi noticed on his Weibo a bigwig account's comment. The verified account belonged to a famous central TV producer, Hu Fei, who had a following of over 600,000 fans. He posted, yesterday, a director from the station recommended to me a late-night radio program called Late Night Ghost Stories, telling me that the novel being read was really awesome. At first, I didn't quite believe it and, with a skeptical attitude, I listened to five episode broadcasts. But in the end, I was really impressed. I felt pleased, as I have read many supernatural novels, but none of those had amazed me this much. The country needs more of such great works. Below the post, many fans rushed to republish it. Late night ghost stories? Never heard of it. Is it that good? If teacher who says he is impressed, then it must be pretty good. Ha ha, even teacher who is recommending it? Looks like everyone's aesthetic style is the same. I began listening to Ghost Blows Out the Light from the first episode and cannot help myself. Seeing this, John Yi felt good. This was the greatest affirmation he could receive. The next day. Late Night Ghost Stories' S ratings for the past few days had been released. First episode, 0.98% Second episode, 0.69% Third episode, 1.01% Fourth episode, 1.14% Fifth episode. 1.27% after nearly a week of broadcasts, even though Zhong Yi's program was still in the top three, it was still a far cry from the second-placed Entertainment Daily. It was not likely to take second place anytime soon, but it had already firmly rooted itself at third place, since it was comfortably above the fourth placing. Moreover, the rating was increasing ever so slightly by the day, meaning that there was still a lot of potential for improvement. Upon the release of the rating results, many skeptics were shut down, including Tian Bin. A miracle had been created. The success of Late Night Ghost Stories made it unbearable for many to lay their sights on it. Colleagues expressed wonder and admiration. As an unexpected competitor, the rise of this late night segment was too sudden. Even the traffic, music, and news channels knew of John Yi. That's how it was in the station, what secret could remain a secret? Hey, are Lee. Old men? What's up? I heard an awesome person came to your literature channel. He pushed the late night program's listenership rating to third place. It is catching up with the ratings of prime time programs. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Awesome, too awesome. You have not heard Ghost Blows Out the Light, yet, right? 
if you listen to it, you will not be surprised. It's a really good piece of work. And it has opened up the tomb robbing genre for supernatural novels. It is the founder. You may not know this, but for the past few days, the amount of letters sent in by listeners every day is just crazy. There would be at least a hundred letters a day. Really? Then I must really give it a listen. Zhong Yi was passing by, when he heard the discussion between the two. With a slight tinge of happiness, he understood now that he has firmed up his standing in the station. Late Night Ghost Stories had become a star program of the Literature Channel and by continuing to contribute to the listenership, Zhong Yi's place as a radio host will rise, too. Chapter 15, Opening a Treasure Chest Again Weekend Jiaoman, inside the rented room. It was John Yi's day off. Late Night Ghost Stories was a non-stop weekly program. Since the Saturday and Sunday segments were pre-recorded already and left to the female assistant, Xiaofang, to broadcast, John Yi could afford to stay home and be lazy. He woke up past 10 a.m. and stretched his body, before getting out of bed. The first thing he did was to bring up the virtual game screen to check on his achievements for these past five days. His reputation points were at 110,000. Other than the first broadcast, which grew his reputation slightly by just over 10,000, and the second broadcast, which added slightly less points, the remaining broadcasts, in total, added over 20,000 reputation points a day. Seeing his reputation grow so rapidly, Zhong Yi couldn't be more pleased. There were enough points to draw at the lottery once again. Without any hesitation, Zhong Yi spent 100,000 reputation points to open up the lottery, this time. I'm not wishing for a special category. Giving me a skills or stats category would do. I've already played it twice, but have still not seen what is in the other categories. Tapping on it. The needle began moving. Stats category, special category, skills category. The needle slowed down and constantly moved past many other regions. Just as it was about to stop on the skills category, a slight jerk made it move forward. It did not hold. Missed by just a bit. Fine, it's still a consumption category. Zhong Yi accepted it as he opened the lid of the treasure chest, small. Inside the chest was a clear bottle with a small wood stopper. Invisibility potion, stealth mode activates after drinking it. Lasts five minutes. Seeing the game ring's introduction to the item, Zhong Yi kept the potion bottle into his ring, as if it was something that did not matter. The inventory was like a spatial storage bag. As for the item he had drawn, he was clearly not very pleased. What's the use for this? To peep in the ladies' room? Don't be ridiculous. Zhong Yi had always been a gentleman. He would not do such nasty things. He had never even thought about it. Besides, the time limit was just a short five minutes. It was not enough to see a thing. Outside, sounds from a commotion could be heard. After washing up, Zhong Yi opened the door to take a look. A bunch of tenants were crowding around in the hallway. Landlady auntie, the rooms are already expensive, yet you want to raise the rental, a university student said angrily. Yeah, you are killing us. This is exploitation, a white-collared female shouted. Standing in the middle, Ario I mean had a face which didn't care for emotional pleas. She squinted her eyes and confronted all of them, houses are so expensive right now. Everyone else is increasing their prices. Do you think I am a charitable organization? If you don't want to stay, there are others who want to. HMPH, to think you dare to argue with me. You, little Zhao, when you owed people money and they came looking for you, who lent you the money to pay it off. And you, little Shui, when you didn't have enough for your school fees, who helped you? The university student's temper suddenly subsided. Speaking softly, he said, didn't I return it all back to you already? Rao I mean staring with her beautiful eyes, paid back and that's it. Have you all forgotten the good I've done for you? Eh? You ingrates. If you aren't staying, scram. Many of them stopped speaking, slowly moving back to their rooms. The others, who had not benefited from Rao I mean's help, continued to protest the increase, but were scolded back into their rooms. Her mouth was vicious, any ordinary person would never be able to win an argument against her. After everyone dispersed, Ario I mean spotted Zhong Yi, hey, little Zhong. Get over here. 
Zhong Yi wanted to hide, but it was too late. Begrudgingly, he followed her to her place. After the door closed, Ario I mean dragged her slippers wearing feet to the coffee table, where a low distribution cultural newspaper laid. She flipped it open to a page, I accidentally saw this in the papers I bought this morning. Not bad, kid. You were mentioned in the papers. She shook the papers and spoke in a strange manner, recently, Beijing radio stations literature channels, late night ghost stories broadcasted a story called Ghost Blows Out the Light. It attracted some good attention and even created history in the ratings of a late night segment, gaining big success. It has even subtly broken the situation of physical and web publications for supernatural novels. According to this reporter, this story is an original work of the segment's DJ, John Yi. Hence, the success of this program cannot be replicated. It was also the first time John Yi realized he was in the papers as he rushed forward, let me see that. Although the distribution of this newspaper isn't very wide and is a bit biased, it's still not bad. You had such results just after entering the radio station? After attacking him once, Ario I mean sat with her legs crossed and quickly changed the subject, when are you paying the rent? If you can't pay, then clear the debt by doing house chores. It's about time to clean the house again. Her attitude flipped faster than flipping a book. Zhong Yi smacked his lips, landlady auntie, see, I'm already now in the papers and I'm a person with status and fans. Can I? Ario I mean did not wait for him to finish, what status do you have? Your only status now is a debtor. Zhong Yi bargained, I can do house chores for you, but you need need to provide me lunch and dinner. He was almost unable to afford instant noodles. Ario I mean leered at him, you even gave a condition? Zhong Yi grumbled, I have not even eaten lunch. I can't work, if I don't eat. Ario I mean clearly was reluctant as she curled her mouth before entering the kitchen. Afterwards, she threw a plastic bag with buns inside, there's only this. I bought it in the morning. Zhong Yi did not stand on ceremony. He wolfed them down right there and then without even heating it up. Ario I mean said disdainfully, you only know how to eat. Did you not eat in your previous life? However, let me tell you that eating buns can kill. Zhong Yi had finished eating two buns in a blink of an eye as he nearly choked, eating buns can kill? Why would I lie to you? There was a resident here who died last year because of eating buns. Who doesn't know that? Ario I mean recalled. There was indeed a person who had died last year. Although Zhong Yi was not here back then, he had heard about it after moving in. He was immediately scared out of his wits. In his previous world, he had heard of Sudan Red G, gutter oil and melamin which were big problems for food hygiene. Zhong Yi was already frightened. And now hearing that someone near him had died eating buns, his face turned white, as he cherished his life greatly. He tried to vomit out the buns that he had just eaten, but failed in doing so. Just as he felt like he could not tolerate it any further, he quickly asked, how did that person die? Was it terrible? Ario I mean swept the dust off her legs and sighed, it was terrible, so terrible. That day, after he went out to buy buns, he got hit by a large truck, killing him. He died from a collision? Zhong Yi nearly fainted. Then, what has that got to do with eating buns? I did not say there was any connection. Ario I mean was in stitches, clearly having teased Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi! Ario I mean was feeling good as she smacked Zhong Yi in the head, all right, kid. Quickly tidy up the place after eating. Also, fill up the bathtub for me. I want to take a bath. Her smiles were like flowers and her expressions were sultry. Although Ario I mean teased Zhong Yi often and she had a bad temper, was older, had frequent mood swings, was cold to others, loved money like it was her life and was very venomous with her words, still. She was very pretty. In Zhong Yi's dreams, he also wished to marry and have such a beautiful woman as his wife. Hi. But upon further thought, it was quite useless. So what if you had a beautiful wife? After seeing her for so long and getting used to her, it would all be the same. It did not matter if she looked pretty or not. What? You don't believe that? Let's give an example. Who wouldn't find his wife beautiful before marriage to the point of dying for love? 
but after being married for seven years, if you were to look into the eyes of your wife for more than a minute a day, then you can be considered to have been stung by your conscience and have rekindled your feelings. Oh, of course, if you are outraged and say things like, bullsh asterisk t, even after another 50 years, or even 500 years, I will still find my wife to be as pretty as a flower, one that can topple countries and is the world's number one beauty. Well, then I don't even have to ask. Your wife must be beside you reading this book. Chapter 16, The Door Opened. Ario's House. Second floor, in the bathroom. The bath water is done. Zhong Yi shouted from inside. The landlady seemed to be on the phone and, after a while, she responded, I can't bathe. I need to go out and will only come back in the afternoon. Ah? What are you doing? Zhong Yi asked. What I do is none of your business. Big Sis Ario's voice was never friendly. I'll leave the house for you to tidy up. Clean it well. Especially those windows on the south side. I'm leaving. Remember to close the door after you leave and don't touch my items. With a slam, the door on the first floor closed. There was only Zhong Yi in the house. After he grumbled and complained a few times, he did not sit idle and began working hard. He knew Big Sis Ario was tough on the outside, but soft on the inside. Many of the tenants may complain about her venomous tongue, but many of them had received help from her. Zhong Yi was one of them. Every time he hadn't eaten, wasn't it Big Sis Ario who settled his meals? Hence, he knew to be grateful. Since he had agreed to clean up her house, he naturally did so properly. After working hard all day, John Yi was done and was covered in sweat. It was already noon, so he finished the remaining two vegetable stuffed buns. As the ancient saying goes, when the belly is full, the mind is among the maids, er, uh, that's not right. As the ancient saying goes, one should have an afternoon nap after having one's meal and get a well-deserved weekend. Zhong Yi did not plan on going against the ancient sayings. However, he could not rest with his body sweaty. He eyed the bathtub in Ario's house with evil intentions. All Zhong Yi had in his bathroom was a shower tap. It wasn't thrilling enough, while Big Sis Ario's bathtub was a big bathtub. Zhong Yi had never enjoyed the sensation of bathing in a bathtub. Furthermore, he had filled it with hot water before, so it would be a waste not to use it. So although Ario I mean had warned Zhong Yi not to touch her things, Zhong Yi did not heed the warning. After all, she would only return in the afternoon. Her house had two bathrooms and the bathroom in question was in Ario I mean's bedroom, upstairs. The bathroom was large and the bathtub was very wide. Touching the water, Zhong Yi found that it was still warm. Zhong Yi closed the door and began taking off his clothes. He threw his underwear and t-shirt into a clothes basket that was beside the washing machine and laid down in the bathtub. After he pulled the white curtain, he comfortably heaved a sigh of relief. Soon, he closed his eyes involuntarily as it was an extreme enjoyment. Half an hour. One hour. Unknowingly, he had fallen asleep. When Zhong Yi opened his eyes again, he was awoken by the slamming of a door nearby. He realized the water's temperature was no longer hot. Phew, this damn sun is really burning me up. The voice of a woman speaking to herself came from beyond the curtain. Who was talking? The landlady was back. Zhong Yi immediately reacted. His face was green. Sha asterisk T, why is she back so early? Didn't she say, he, what do you mean early? He had slept so soundly. Zhong Yi was in a panic. He felt like he had been caught red-handed and felt extremely embarrassed. But no matter what he did now, it was useless. Zhong Yi tilted his head and looked through the gap of the curtain, thinking of admitting his mistake. However, just this peak made it worse. Zhong Yi felt his nose turn warm. He nearly couldn't control it. About two meters away, Ario I mean had taken off her top and threw it into the washing machine. She did not wear much, it being summer. Her back was facing Zhong Yi and she was currently bending her arms to unhook her bra. And soon, the nude-colored embroidered bra was taken off and thrown to the side. Her hands moved down as she cursed at the weather, while she began taking off the gray skirt she was wearing. With an unbuckle, the dress fell to the bathroom floor. 
After taking a step forward, Ario I mean used her toes to fling the skirt into the washing machine. The landlady was always a person whose actions and words were swift like lightning. How swift was it? It reached the point where just as Zhongyi was about to shout out to her, the landlady had taken off her bra and skirt at a speed which you can call as swift as lightning. Now she was bending over to take take off the pantyhose that covered those perfectly elastic legs of hers. Zhong Yi quickly held back the voice that he almost released. He remembered the scene of him coming to this place while looking for a place to stay, back in his previous world. The 30 square meter room he was currently renting was originally rented by a jobless young hooligan. He had drank too much with a friend one day and, together with his friend, insulted Ario I mean sexually. With his own eyes, Zhong Yi saw Ario I mean, a female, beat the two hooligans from upstairs all the way to downstairs with them not even being able to hit back. They ran away with their faces bruised. With the room empty, it was rented to Zhong Yi. As such, Zhong Yi knew how powerful the landlady was and was always in awe. She had almost stripped off everything. He had also almost seen enough. It was already too late to say, sorry, I'm here. Zhong Yi did not want to end up being beaten up like those two hooligans. Although the world background was different now, there had not been any fundamental changes in his interpersonal relations. The landlady was still that woman who had the ability to fight against two young males single-handedly. What would be his outcome if she kicked him with all she got? Furthermore, Zhong Yi was just taking his first steps in becoming a well-known radio host. If he was caught peeking, then wouldn't it be embarrassing? He definitely could not let the landlady discover him. With a flash of inspiration in his mind, he quickly made a decision. He did not dare to make any big actions, as he was afraid the sound of the water splashing would reveal his presence. He could only quickly and gently open the game ring's interface and take out the invisibility potion that he had drawn in the afternoon. Quickly, he opened and drank down the transparent liquid. In a second, Zhong Yi could see his body turn transparent and it seemed to merge with the water. He had magically disappeared. The game virtual screen began counting down. 459, 458. Coincidentally, after taking off the nude colored stocking, Ario I mean turned around and pulled open the bathtub's curtain and looked inside. Zhong Yi did not have the mental facilities to consider the miracle of being invisible as his body tensed up. He did not even dare to breathe. Under these circumstances, it was very difficult to hold his breath. He endured it so much that even his eyebrows stood up. The fragrance of a mature woman impacted his nostrils. That skin. That body. As for Ario I mean, she really did not see Zhong Yi, who had disappeared because of the invisibility potion. She muttered to herself, that kid Zhong Yi did not release the water, even after knowing I was going out. Was he waiting for me to use it to water the plants? To think that he became a host with such slow thinking. This is the first time I heard of radio stations being charity organizations. They will take in anybody. Zhong Yi was wondering how much she hated him for her to scold him even when he wasn't around. Some people may have a spiked tongue on the surface, but what was said was usually done in a joking fashion. However, Ario I mean spiked tongue came from her bones. She loved to scold, taunt and put down people. Wasn't this so? Even with Zhong Yi not being around, Ario I mean had no intentions of being light with her biting remarks, even in private. Hi, let's see if the water has cooled down. Suddenly, Ario I mean reached out her hand towards the water without any warning. Zhong Yi's soul nearly flew out due to his fright. Seeing the landlady's hand move towards his thigh, she asterisk T. He was about to be discovered. Chapter 17, Little Zhong, Quickly Run. Zhong Yi couldn't just sit around and do nothing. His invisibility was just an illusion, it was a trick. He could still feel his body physically exist and the landlady could naturally be able to touch him, too. It wasn't as if he had completely disappeared. If he was touched, not only would Zhong Yi have to endure Rao I mean's fury, but his greatest secret would be exposed, too. The game ring he no one could ever know of its existence. Not everyone could accept something so illogical and out of this world. And so Zhong Yi's reaction was abnormally fast and agile. A split second. A second split. At this moment of danger, he. He did nothing. 
Well, luckily Raoi Mean's hand did not dip herself into the water. It was only deep enough to test the water temperature with half of her palm. It's still warm. Raoi Mean said to herself. She bent over and released the bathtub's water. At the same time, she turned on the hot water faucet to fill up the tub. Invisibility time duration was still valid for four and a half minutes. John Yi was glad that he had not washed his hair, nor had he applied shower foam and that his body was rather clean. Otherwise, any floating things on the water's surface would have given him away. There's only one plan left, a run. Over there, Ario I mean was already unable to withstand the hot weather and could not wait for the water. She took a step forward with her tight and beautiful legs and, with a tiptoe, she stepped towards Zhong Yi. At this moment, Zhong Yi could not remain motionless. Noticing that the landlady's gaze was not on the bathtub, he took advantage of the hot water splashing down to conceal his moves. He bent his waist and carefully avoided those white legs of hers and stood up from the bathtub immediately following that. At the same time, Ario I mean's other leg had made the stride as she stood in the bathtub, too. Oh. Maybe it was due to the turbulation Zhong Yi had caused while standing up, but Ario I mean felt as if something was amiss as her face turned vexed. 20 centimeters. The two people were separated by such a tiny distance. Zhong Yi held his breath and did not make a sound. He didn't even dare to blink. After observing the surroundings, Ario I mean seemed to brush away her suspicions. With a splash, she sat down in the bathtub and let out a comfortable sigh of relief. There were still three minutes left of invisibility. Ario I mean's hip was nearly about to touch Zhong Yi's legs, which were still in the bathtub. Zhong Yi knew that he could not wait any longer. Seeing the landlady cross her legs in midair as she reached out to take the shower gel from the counter, he took the opportunity to quickly pull a leg out of the bathtub, which was quickly followed by the second leg. Although the sound of him coming out was drowned by the rushing water, it still seemed abnormal. Ario I mean, who was lathering the shower gel, frowned and focused once again. Her senses were very keen. She was met with silence again. Two more minutes left. Another 159. During the periods when he could not move, Zhong Yi could not help but check the landlady's body out. His throat was dry, but he did not dare to swallow. It was extremely uncomfortable. Slender. Well proportioned. This was the body evaluation Zhong Yi gave to the landlady. Although he had never dated because of his looks and height, with the advanced information age, he was no stranger to females. Even if he had not seen it in person, how could he have not seen it in pictures? However, Ario I mean's body lines were something Zhong Yi had seen for the first time. It was too well proportioned and was perfect in all the right places. Even at her age, she did not have the slightest flab anywhere. There was not even a tiny amount of fat on her belly. Beautiful and a nice figure. Look at her and then look back at himself. Hi, sometimes the heavens were unfair. Some people had things that he would not be able to obtain, even if he worked hard all his life. If he had such excellent looks like Ario I mean by being handsome and tall. The thought about becoming a celebrity? To ability to develop his career? It could at least reduce the hard work he needed to do by a decade. It would be great if this world did not judge people by their looks. This was something that Zhong Yi had always felt helpless against. Look at the television programs from his world. What sort of rotten programs were, The Voice of China, and Superboy? Why weren't there competitions like, The Leg Hair of China? Why weren't there pageants like, Super Leg Hair 2014? If the artistic realm did not discriminate and had ranks in the artistic world, then if he could make leg hair become popular, then Zhong Yi would not have such a low starting point. He would not have needed to endure the criticisms and difficulty in becoming an unseen radio host. Forget it. There was no time to think about this. Zhong Yi walked sideways as he slowly moved around the bathtub's curtain. After spending 30 seconds, he managed to reach the outermost part of the curtain. The opening to the curtain was also where Ario I mean's head was. Ario I mean was enjoying her bath and had already lathered up a lot of foam with her hands. Zhong Yi took a final reluctant look at her fully foamed body, before squeezing out of the curtain. He had also accidentally touched a strand of the landlady's hair, but thankfully she did not notice it. 
the hair tickled him when it brushed past Zhong Yi's thigh. There was less than twenty seconds left to his invisibility. Zhong Yi did not have time to reminiscence, as he gently grabbed his clothes from the washing basket beside the washing machine. He silently took a few deep breaths. Thankfully, the landlady threw her clothes onto the washing machine and not into the clothes basket, or else she would have felt that something was amiss after seeing Zhong Yi's clothes. Next, he needed to leave the bathroom. There was no way to hide the sound of opening the door, but Zhong Yi could not care less. Waiting any further would expose him, hence he carefully held the door handle. K.A. The door made a sound. Before he could rush out, the voice of the landlady came in a killing fashion, who? The curtain was sewn, but it was not impossible to look out. Zhong Yi knew this, so he did not even wait before rushing out the bathroom. Only then did he pretend to open a door from the outside and say in a cold sweat, Ah, uh, landlady auntie, it's me. Are you back? Ario I mean's voice came from inside, oh, it's you. He, why are you still in my house? Why didn't I see you when I returned home? John Yi immediately answered, oh, I was outside helping you wipe the windows. Really? You sure are quite dedicated. All right. I'm still bathing. Since you did well, you can come here for dinner tonight. Ario I mean said. John Yi said, all right, then I'll go back first. Ario I mean said, all right, scram. Zhong Yi heaved a sigh of relief as the duration of the invisibility potion expired. Seeing his body slowly turning visible, he wore his clothes and dried the wet stains he had left behind with a cloth to remove the evidence of his crime. After cleaning up the scene, he left Ario I mean's house. Today, his heart nearly failed. Chapter 18, The Channel's Number One Girl Doesn't Acknowledge Him. A New Week. John Yi came early, as there was a meeting early in the morning. The small conference room in the Literature Channel's office area nearly could not fit everyone. The main director, Zhao Guoju, said with glee, I have a piece of good news to tell everyone. Our Literature Channel's overall average listenership has exceeded the music channel for two consecutive days for the weekend. We have once again taken over the top three spots in the station. There is no way to separate this result from everyone's hard work. I suggest that everyone give a round of applause for yourself. Ba ba ba. Everyone clapped and cheered. As the news channel and the traffic channel were special, there was no way to compete for the top two spots in the Beijing radio station. It was the same for television programs. How could a variety show or drama show compete with the central news broadcast? No one would compete, except for certain heaven-defying programs or events, as there was no point and no meaning. However, third place was something to compete for. The third place was always something the music and literature frequency channels competed for. The competition had always been fierce over the past couple of years. Everyone heaved a sigh of relief after regaining third place from the music channel, having been suppressed by the music channel for months. Next, I will announce the listenership for the weekend. Zhao Guoju picked up the document. Talk about the world, listenership 3.19%, 3.27%. Entertainment Daily, listenership 2.13%, 2. 22%, Late Night Ghost Stories, listenership 1.39%, 1.42%. Laughter Daily, listenership 0.92%, 0.93%, the two numbers were respectively for Saturday and Sunday. Zhao Guoju announced from first place, Talk About the World, to last place, Old and Young Story Club and finally summarized his speech while looking at everyone, there's no need to talk about Xiaomai. Talk about the world has always been number one in our channel and its listenership has always been very stable. Right, I need to specially praise Zhong Yi this time. For us to finally exceed the music channel, we cannot ignore the contributions Late Night Ghost Stories has made. It managed to go from last place all the way to a segment with great listenership and that was all thanks to Zhong Yi. And maybe it was because it was the weekend with people sleeping later, which made late night ghost stories have another jump in its ratings. Very good, little Zhong. Keep it up. Zhong Yi humbly said, Director Zhao, yes, I will. Tian Bin gritted his teeth as he glanced at him with a complex look. The number one girl, Wang Xiaomai, the other hosts, and the staff looked at Zhong Yi. They all had different thoughts about seeing this rookie host who had such outstanding results. 
Zhao Guizhu nodded, next, let's discuss about the week's tasks. Zhong Yi did not like meetings, as they would make him sleepy. It was the same during college. He always could not help but sleep after reaching a certain point. But surprisingly, he did not sleep today. As the talks droned on, Zhao Guizhu suddenly jumped up on the meeting table and danced the rumba. Zhong Yi was instantly interested as he watched with worry at those old legs dancing and relished the sight. And then, well, Zhong Yi woke up. He noticed the host of Old and Young Story Club beside him. Fifty plus year old teacher Fong was pulling at his arms to wake him up. Zhong Yi immediately gave teacher Fong a grateful glance. Hi, but he slept again. Zhao Guizhu was still droning on as he said to Wang Xiaomai, Xiaomai, for tonight's talk about the world live broadcast at 8 pm, it would be the rare topic on emotions. You will need to have intensive interactions with the listeners, so are you well prepared? Talk about the world was a more open segment. It would talk about almost anything under the sun, including about society and emotions, Wang Xiaomai said in a relaxed fashion. Leader, be rest assured. Although most of the shows were pre recorded over the years, I have done several live broadcasts, too. There shouldn't be a problem. Then, that's good. Zhao Guizhu smiled. I'm at ease with you hosting it. Wang Xiaomai asked, I'm now lacking a guest. The counselor, teacher Jiang, we invited the last time can't come, as he's out of town. We were informed only this morning, but if there's really no one, I can do it alone. Zhao Guizhu gave some thought before saying, it's better if there's a guest. A small director suggested, why don't we get one of our channel's hosts to make a guest appearance? Zhao Guizhou's gaze suddenly landed on Zhong Yi and, with a blink, he seemed to have an idea, little Zhong, why don't you go? You are about the same age as Xiaomai and you are both young, so your values and emotional aspects should be similar and work well together. You can also use this opportunity to promote our channel's late-night program. What say you? Zhong Yi was stunned, I'll follow the leader's instructions. Zhao Guizhu made his decision, all right, then let's have it that way. This was naturally a good thing for Zhong Yi. Although his ratings had improved by leaps and bounds, breaking records, it was still a great distance away, when compared to the station's top program, Talk About the World. They were completely not on the same level. If he could take advantage of her show to benefit his, it would be the best outcome. Besides, Zhong Yi never gave up the opportunity for him to have an appearance. His goal was to be famous, so every opportunity to make an appearance was an opportunity for him to raise his reputation points. Zhong Yi was dying for such an opportunity. However, it was clear that Wang Xiaomai was reluctant to accept this as she said unhappily, Director Zhao, shouldn't you find a teacher with more experience? Zhao Guizhu said, little Zhong goes without a script, be it a live or pre-recorded broadcast, and you are doubting his ability to speak. I don't think there is a problem. The meeting ended. People shuffled out from the conference room. Zhong Yi definitely had to talk to Wang Xiaomai about the live broadcast. As he ran to catch up with Wang Xiaomai, teacher Wang. Wang Xiaomai stopped, little Zhong, what's the matter? Zhong Yi thought in his mind that wasn't it clear what he was doing, as he said, about the live broadcast, shouldn't we? Wang Xiaomai cut him off, this episode's live broadcast does not have a script. We will just listen to the connected listeners' questions and give solutions. You do not need to speak much during the broadcast. You also should not speak, unless I allow you to do so. I have my rhythm, so you should just follow mine. Do not express too many of your personal opinions and recommendations in matters of the heart. I don't think you have ever dated, so leave all the technical questions to me. If you were to say something wrong or give a wrong suggestion, you will influence my program's listenership and the listener's trust. Zhong Yi. After Wang Xiaomai dropped those words, she left. Zhong Yi thought, did I provoke you? Why do you need to do that? I didn't do anything to you, yet you had already attacked me repeatedly. Don't you trust your colleagues? And what was that attitude? I'm, after all, our channel's host with listenership rates that place third, can't you give me the most basic amount of respect? And to not let me express my personal opinion. Just because I have never dated. You sure are funny. Thinking about the times back in school when so many young girls chased after me, but I never bothered paying any attention to them. 
this bro's relationship experience is completely, completely, asterisk cough asterisk, forget it. Let's not brag anymore. Chapter 19, Someone Wants to Commit Suicide During a Live Broadcast At Night Talk About the World's Broadcast Studio Ten minutes before the broadcast began, Zhong Yi, who was the guest, came inside. Wang Xiaomai was already here, head bowed and busy with her preparations. She did not bother to look at Zhong Yi. Her phone call editor was also in the room, a youth whose face had many moles. Compared to Wang Xiaomai, he was much nicer. Teacher Zhong, you have come? Please, take a seat here. Okay. This is my earpiece? Yes, please put it on and test it. I will adjust it for you. Yes, it sounds just nice, the MIC is fine, too. Then, the live broadcast is nine minutes away. I will go to the other side. The phone call editor went into the soundproof room. With every minute that passed, he gave a gesture to signal. In the last 30 seconds, Wang Xiaomai suddenly said, I'll repeat it, do not speak without thought and follow my views and rhythm. Zhong Yi replied indifferently, all right. She was, after all, more experienced than him. Regardless of results or experience, Zhong Yi could not compete. Moreover, he was here with hopes of promoting his program. Therefore, he did not take her attitude to heart. 3, 2, 1. The broadcast began. Wang Xiaomai fiddled with her equipment. She said, smilingly, I hope everyone is well. Welcome to Talk About the World. I am your DJ, Wang Xiaomai. Some of you might know that today's live broadcast topic is about the matters of the heart. We are fortunate to have a guest with us today. He's our very own channel's late night ghost stories host, also known as the author of Ghost Blows Out the Light, Teacher Zhong Yi. Please say a few words to our listeners. Zhong Yi immediately spoke into his attached MIC, hello, listeners and friends. I am Zhong Yi. I'm very honored to be here today with Teacher Wang to listen and try to solve everyone's matters of the heart. Wang Xiaomai followed up, the hotlines are already open. If you have met with any love issues, please feel free to call in. On the broadcast platform, there was a computer shown, which displayed the listeners and website's real-time comments. Just as expected of the Literature Channel's top program, the discussion atmosphere was very strong. User 3577, Love Topic Program? Ha ha, this is great. Let's see Teacher Wang take on love issues. User 1041, Teacher Zhong Yi is here, too? My wife and I are listening to Ghost Blows Out the Light every night these days. User 5502, Ghost Blows Out the Light? It's a ghost story, right? There aren't any good ghost stories these days. I've been let down by supernatural novels long ago. User 2890, friend above, that's where you are wrong, I guarantee you that, Ghost Blows Out the Light, is different from any supernatural novels you have listened to before, it's a classic amongst classics. User 5502, is that so? Then, I will go give it a listen tonight. User 0019, just the title alone sounds good. I will listen to it tonight, too. A star program's promotional effect is really good. Zhong Yi knew that tonight's broadcast rating should be able to go up a little more. On the other side, the phone call editor signaled, the call screening was done. Of course, such calls have to be screened. After all, it was a live broadcast and there would be trouble makers. As such, a professional phone call editor had to judge and pick, filtering for the correct topics and the reliable callers. Wang Xiaomai nodded, OK, our first caller has connected. Hello? Is it me? It was a female listener, excited, is it really me? Wang Xiaomai said softly, ha ha, yes. How can I help you? The female listener quickly answered, Teacher Wang, Teacher Wang, you are my idol. My boyfriend and I both like you very much. Upon saying that, her tone became a sigh, but my boyfriend has been ignoring me recently. In the past, he wouldn't get angry with me and now, he's been throwing his temper at me every day. He even goes to the internet to chat with other girls and flirts with them. I peeked at his messages and they all say, are you awake, have you slept, good night, and remember to eat on time. He has never been this concerned towards me before. Teacher. Please tell me. 
What should I do? Wang Xiaomai frowned, Lady, towards these kind of men who don't care about you, my suggestion has always been to break up. Such kinds of messages of concern might not seem like a big deal. It could be concern for ordinary friends. But let me tell you, this is actually a big issue. If it goes on, it could get dangerous. It also shows that his heart is not with you. If you mention an intention to break up, you are also sending him a message of where your limits are. If you bear with it, he will only be more encouraged and get further and further away from you. If that is so, why not just break up now? See if he is willing to change, if he does, you can consider being with him. If not, then it goes to show that he really does not care about you. It's better to end it early in that case. The female listener replied, is that really so? Wang Xiaomai looked at Zhong Yi, what do you think, teacher Zhong? Zhong Yi blinked, I feel it's better to communicate first. A relationship is basically between two people. It might be because you have him too tight on a leash, leading him to feel like running away. Noticing Wang Xiaomei's stern eyes, Zhong Yi added, if communicating doesn't work, teacher Wang's suggestion could be a way out, too. On the computer display, the listeners had big reactions. Teacher Zhong Yi is a troublemaker. You should just break up with this kind of guy. Teacher Wang is right. Correct. If it were me, I would have given that guy a good scolding. Whatever does he mean by a problem between the two? Ha ha, I like listening to Teacher Wang's talking down about people, it's so forthright. Teacher Zhong Yi, don't make trouble. One phone call. Three phone calls. Five phone calls. Wang Xiaomai was talking down to all of them. She advised them all to break up. Wang Xiaomai obviously thought that Zhong Yi spoke too much and did not follow her directions, so for the next few calls, she did not even ask for Zhong Yi's views. Zhong Yi sat in his seat for a good half hour without saying anything. Zhong Yi wasn't too happy either, he was here as a guest to express his views. Oh, but you are good, forcing me to express views that are yours. Based on what? Our program is coming to an end soon. Let's go for a commercial break and we will be back to answer the last call. Wang Xiaomai signaled with a finger to her phone call editor. Zhong Yi simply switched off his MIC since he was prepared to not speak anymore. During the commercial break, Wang Xiaomai stared coldly at Zhong Yi, what did I tell you earlier? Zhong Yi retorted, we were just giving our own opinions, what's the problem with it? I feel that matters of the heart should be given advice, as to whether they will break up or not should be left to themselves. We are only giving a point of view and our thoughts to them, not encouraging them to break up. This encouragement is well liked by the listeners, but they just want to see the world burn. Who doesn't like some excitement? But what about the couple? What about their feelings? Wang Xiaomai was on fire, do I need you to teach me? Zhong Yi threw back his arms, so I will not say a thing anymore, you talk. The two of them were very unhappy. Zhong Yi did not care about respecting seniors anymore, anything can be solved amicably, but not something concerning principles. After the commercial break, the live broadcast continued. Wang Xiaomai suppressed her anger, let us answer the last call. Hello? A voice of a very quiet female, young and likely not over 25 years of age, spoke. How are you? What issues did you encounter? You can tell it to us. Wang Xiaomai said. But it was this last call that had a big problem. The girl said, my name is Xiao Li and I am 23 years old. I am a third-year university student and my boyfriend graduated this year. But, his family arranged for him to further his studies overseas and he will only be back after five years. Wang Xiaomai questioned, where will he be going? The university student said, New York. I know that if he leaves, our relationship will end. So I am trying my best to make him stay, but he refuses. He even made me promise to wait for him, saying that he will marry me when he is back after five years. But, I don't believe it. Wang Xiaomai, seemingly unaffected by Zhong Yi's words earlier, instead became more persistent in her way of handling these matters. Lady, if your boyfriend really loves you, I think he would choose to stay behind. But it seems that he puts his career and development over your love. Such a guy doesn't deserve to be kept. If you really wait for him for five years, then you are really silly. 
I don't believe in long-distance relationships, even if the love is strong, it will fade, eventually. End it sooner than later, you should think about it. The university student replied weakly, I've already thought it through. That's good. Wang Xiaomai pleasingly said, that is all we can help you with. The university student laughed lightly, thank you, teacher. I know what to do now. This phone call will serve as the last message from me. I hope my boyfriend can hear this. Oh no. There was something unusual with the call. Wang Xiaomai sensing something was wrong, what are you doing? The university student replied lightly, holding my boyfriend's razor blade. Without him, there is nothing for me to live for anymore. Goodbye. Zhang Yi shivered in fear. Wang Xiaomai suddenly felt anxious. Chapter 20, That, The Furthest Distance in the World, Poem Committing Suicide? The razor blade is already in her hand? The atmosphere in the broadcast room immediately changed. Wang Xiaomai was a veteran broadcasting host in the station and had seen all sorts of situations, especially unexpected incidents during a live broadcasting, like a listener calling in to curse or a piece of equipment failing. However, this was the first time she had encountered a person wanting to commit suicide during a live broadcast. Listeners by the radio immediately exploded in their reactions. Boatloads of messages began flooding in. Is that true? Teacher Wang, quickly say something. Don't let her commit suicide. Quickly persuade her. She's just a 22-year-old child. Why is she taking things so hard? Miss, you must not die. How can you do this to your parents? However, the messages left by the netizens obviously could not be seen by the young lady. Wang Xiaomai gasped as she quickly said to the female university student, Sister. Sister. You must not commit suicide. Listen to what this elder sister has to say. The female university student replied, There's no need to say anything more, Teacher Wang. I've already decided that I can't live on in a world without him. The distance between Beijing and New York is the world's greatest distance. By leaving today, I hope that I can be closer to him. I believe we can be together in heaven, forever. Wang Xiaomai shouted, Why are you so silly? The female university student said, I'm not silly, it's because I love him. Put down the razor blade first. Wang Xiaomai hastily said, this is you being irresponsible to yourself. It is also being irresponsible to your family. How can you just die like that after your parents painstakingly brought you up? You are too selfish. Have you thought about what others feel? Have you thought about how sad your parents and friends will be after you leave? With a life on the line, Zhang Yi could not be bothered to argue with Wang Xiaomai. He signaled to Wang Xiaomai to stabilize the girl as he ran out of the broadcasting room into the telephone editor's room. He closed the door and shouted, what are you dazing around for? Quickly, call the police. The telephone editor panicked, call the police? Right. Call the police. Zhang Yi directed, hurry. 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 Give her telephone number to the police. Find out her address and quickly go to her rescue. If not, it will be too late. The telephone editor immediately followed his instructions, Hello, is this 110? Suddenly, the door leading out was pushed open as seven people rushed in. The group was led by Zhao Guizhu. He angrily shouted, What the heck? Ah! The telephone editor pretended he was busy on the phone with the police and did not dare to respond to Director Zhao's question. Zhao Guizhu had a bad temper and immediately slammed the table, how did you screen the telephone? A. Eh? How can you let just any telephone call through? What were you doing? If the call was not chosen, then the female university student would not have listened to Wang Xiaomei's extremist advice and might not have decided on committing suicide taking 10,000 steps back, even if the girl eventually chose to take her life, at least it wouldn't have been during their literature channel's live broadcast and would have had nothing to do with their radio station. However, now with the telephone call having been connected, to the listeners, it was clear that the girl had decided to end her life due to Wang Xiaomei's words and their program. With the negative news, it was obvious that their radio station would be pushed to the tip of the plank. Talk about the world? the Literature Channel's number one listenership program. Those were all jokes. 
from the pressure of public opinion, their program would definitely face being taken off the air. There would be no way to recover from this. The Literature Channel's deputy was also extremely anxious, how is it, now? The telephone editor put down the phone and said, guiltily, the police have said that they will need at least an hour to find her address and her house. They asked us to delay as long as possible. The Talk About the World program editing team turned pale, an hour? There is no way we can do it. Zhao Guoju shouted, you have to do it, even if you can't. Hold on to her. Definitely do not allow her to commit suicide. Or our literature channel is doomed. All the programs will suffer a devastating blow. They were working in the media, so they definitely knew the power of public opinion and the media. The back door opened once again. The radio station's leader also rushed in, old Zhao. Zhao Guoju came forward, station head Jiao. Why are you here? This was an old man, who was also the Beijing radio station's deputy station head, you're asking why I'm here. I'm here to see the trouble your program has caused. Immediately settle it for me. Zhao Guoju said, we will definitely do our best. He said to Zhong Yi. Little Zhong. Go back and persuade her. You must hold her for at least an hour. You can ignore the programs after this. Everything will be delayed. Zhong Yi responded and ran back into the broadcasting room. In here, it was soundproof, so there was no noise, only Wang Xiaomei's continuous persuasion. Sister, you are still young. This elder sister is experienced, so you must hear what I say. Wang Xiaomei said earnestly, just now, what I said was a bit extremist. Actually, if the both of you still have feelings for each other, it is not impossible. I have handled several such cases where the men are in a distant land for many years, but the relationship between the two when he returns is still as good as ever. In the end, they got married and had kids, leading a blissful life. Why can't you? The female university student laughed, the distant land you say is at most in the south and north of China. Taking a plane or a train will allow them to quickly meet. But it's different between me and my boyfriend. Beijing and New York are on opposite sides of the world and is the world's greatest distance. Also, due to the financial limitations and the issue with passports, we will probably never meet in the entire five years. I know this more than anyone else. Thank you, Teacher Wang. Thank you for your consolation. I have already made my decision. Let me say sorry to my parents and friends here. I'm really sorry. B.A. La. The sound of the blade sounded again. At this second, Deputy Station Head Jiao, Zhao Guoju and all the members of the management outside covered their mouths and turned silent. Wang Xiaomai shouted, no. The female university student felt liberated as she said, goodbye. Zhao Guizhou's lips turned pale. It's over. We can't hold on anymore. The other female staff members of the literature channel all screamed as they covered their ears. They could not bear to see this scene. Wang Xiaomai still wanted to persuade her, but she was already at a loss for words. The female university student was clearly a youth in the literature and arts department. She was artistic and very sensitive. She was immersed in her world and nothing could penetrate into it. This sort of person was the most terrifying, as there was no way of persuading such a person. Wang Xiaomai had already tried her best, but at this moment, she, as the person who always helped solve the emotional problems others, had claimed to speak for women, but felt powerless and weak for the first time in her life. She was just 22 years old. She was still a university student. She was ending her life, just because of a relationship? Zhong Yi's face sank as he angrily turned on his microphone and rebuked, Lady, do you know what sort of person I hate the most in my entire life? It's self-righteous artistic youths, like you. Wang Xiaomai was shocked, what are you saying? Zhao Guoju and the telephone editor outside were stunned. At this moment, on the brink of disaster, why are you provoking her? Do you really want her to commit suicide? Why? The female university student remained silent for a moment before saying. I'm not self-righteous. I understand the gap in our feelings very well. Zhong Yi coldly sneered, this is why you are self-righteous. There is no distance for feelings. You previously said the distance between Beijing and New York is the furthest. 
That's simply ridiculous. Why? Isn't that the furthest? The female university student asked. Zhong Yi pondered before saying a famous poem from his world. The furthest distance in the world is not the distance between opposite sides of the world. It is that you don't know that I love you, when I stand in front of you. The furthest distance in the world is not that you don't know I love you when I stand in front of you. It is when I cannot say I love you, when I love you so madly. The furthest distance in the world is not that I cannot say I love you, when I love you so madly. It is that I have to bury it in my heart, despite the unbearable yearning. The furthest distance in the world is not that I have to bury it in my heart, despite the unbearable yearning. It is when we cannot be together, even when we love each other. The furthest distance in the world is not that we cannot be together, when we love each other. It is when we turn a blind eye to it, despite knowing true love conquers all. The furthest distance in the world is not the distance between two distant trees. It is when branches cannot depend on each other in the wind, despite growing from the same root. The furthest distance in the world is not when branches cannot depend on each other in the wind. It is when the trajectories of stars cannot cross, even when the blinking stars look at each other. The furthest distance in the world is not when the trajectories of stars cannot cross. It is when they are unable to find each other after crossing trajectories. The furthest distance in the world is not being unable to find each other. It is when we are doomed not to love, even when we coincidentally meet. The air turned still and the atmosphere quiet. The deathly feel in the broadcast room suddenly turned gentle. No one had heard of the poem Zhong Yi had said. A few women were even mesmerized by the poem. At the final stanza, which was the critical ending stanza, Zhong Yi used his magnetic tone as a broadcasting host to recite it slowly. The furthest distance in the world is the love between the bird and fish. One is flying in the sky, the other is looking upon the sea. The furthest distance? Flying bird and fish? This sort of interpretation of distant love was the first time everyone had heard it. Wang Xiaomei's expression turned complex. The telephone editor was entirely convinced, while Zhao Guizhu and company were deep in thought. This poem had really shocked everyone present. It was a heartfelt shock that came right from within, it was hard to be described with words, 